We're live. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, my name is Manny from Cascade Sense. I'll be your host tonight on Team Top 5 Live. I'm here with the squad, and uh, we have a packed house tonight. We have all main cast members of Team Top 5, all six of us, and we are introducing our guest tonight. And uh, the guest of honor is Stephen Gabriel Autos. Red Lessons, please tell us who you are. Thank you for coming in. How's it going, guys? Steven, I have a YouTube channel called Red Lessons. Thank you for having me on today. I'm super excited to be here. So uh, my nickname for today is going to be The Professor. Uh, it was hinted at hey. by somebody else, so thank you for that. You helped me enormously. Uh, my set of the day for today is Suave by Parfum Vintage. New one. Ooh. Yeah, it's a La Nuit de Lum clone. And my punishment fragrance for today is Zeno by Davidoff. I love this stuff. Hey. So excited to wear it. <laughs> So, um, as you see here, uh, Steven was able to introduce what he's actually wearing today and his Punishment Fragrance. Punishment Fragrance in regards to the game that we have in just a bit. It's our true and false fragrance game. Can't wait to get to that. But in the meantime, I will introduce everyone else, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Too Fresh himself. Tell us who you are, please. Hey, guys. What's going on? Uh, my name is Nick Cascade Sense. I'll be your host tonight on Team Top 5 Live. I'm here with oh, the and, okay. uh, So, my son is going to be... By Killian's Back to Black, um, really, really nice stuff. Uh, we this today, I was chopping wood and uh, we're at the church, so we had to do a little bit of both for both worlds. Um, and my, let's see, my um, punishment fragrance is going to be A City on Fire from Imagining Authors, a smoky bomb right here with that burnt match note. So it's, it's going to be a tough one, I think. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah. just to interrupt uh, quickly, uh, since you are spraying a sample, good sir, with not as big of a straw, I'm yeah, going to require you to do two sprays <laughs> if you actually get something wrong. Just all right, so. all right, all right. Because I'm... someone else has that as their punishment fragrance, so I might as well cut to him right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who are you and where are you from? <laughs> Hey, what's up? It's Ash Ketchum, Ashton from <laughs> Gen Sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah, obviously my, my punishment scent is sitting on fire. It's not intentional. I actually just went over and grabbed it. And then Bradley said he had already picked that one. So, you know, we're both going to go with that one. Yeah. I actually really like it. So if I lose, it's whatever. And I don't think it's mixed. it smells like bacon. Like some people tell me it smells like bacon. I don't think so. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, scent of the day was Xenia Italian Bergamot because it was actually really warm today. So I hit that like five or six times. Good to go. It's a really good one, to be fair. Lovely. All right, it sounds good. Uh, next up, uh, my uh, Manchester brethren. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I'm the Fragrance of Praise. You should all know me by now. Um, I am the most loved and most hated uh, content creator <laughs> on this platform. And speaking of perfumes vintage, they although they are not my punishment fragrance, I am their punishment reviewer. Anyway, <laughs> my scent of the day is Dior Om today. Uh, I'm feeling it. It would definitely not be my top 10 on a full list and anybody who would put this at top 10 on their full list is obviously a child and needs to grow up. And um, <laughs> that is quite evident. shot at me, not. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my punishment fragrance is, um, it is Slumberhouse Gique or Gique. Uh, it is an extraordinary sprays, powerful fragrance. Honestly, um, you are going to get a lot out of just one spray of this. In fact, one spray, I'll be in the whole... Uh, you know, whole I'm going to presume there. that you're going to get these two questions right, George, and you won't have to spray that, because I otherwise, so. like my friend Bradley said, two sprays if you're wrong. Yeah, I know. Two sprays for consistency's sake. Come on, man. There we, go. <laughs> we don't discriminate around here. And uh, yeah. that being said, we don't discriminate, because we got other countries involved, including my own... So, fellow Canadian, tell us who you are. Yeah! All right, guys. My name is James from the channel J Royal. <laughs> I decided to get dressed fancy today because it's a special occasion, as you can see. Lovely. And um, my scent of the morning actually was Alexandria Signature. Oh. I'm testing some of that out, and it was it's really nice. It's a reminiscent of Edition Blanche, I will say. Oh, cool. Uh, but my scent of the night is my boy, Club de Nuit Intense Man. Um, I know this is our opportunity to show off our amazing niche fragrances, but uh, I got to be honest, I felt like this one. Yeah. And uh, my punishment fragrance is the cinnamon clove balm that is Costume National um, ah. Eau de Parfum. 
Nice. Play. All right. And, uh, it's a bit nauseating, especially with more than one spray. So I'm looking forward to stinking up my entire house. Oh, yeah. great. That, Good like, for you. like uh, the, it, it's 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 super clothy. Like that, I'll just yeah, say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone in the uh, any of you stream monsters have tried costume national. On, uh, I don't envy James for uh, punishment fragrance. I'm, I, Centropreneur is a huge fan. I will yes, say. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Canada. <laughs> um, that being yeah. said, I might rather be. Uh, inclined to wear a city on fire myself <laughs> just because I, I i just can't stand clove but uh shout out to costume national anyway uh anyway last but not least and again i don't discriminate here or we don't uh fellow asian who are you and where are you from <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm Timmy from the channel imagine scent my nickname is gourmet because my favorite genre is gourmand so my favorite scent of the day this morning was actually the same as steven it was suave by nice. Puffins Vintage. Ah. Testing this out for a review, of course. I think Steven's doing the same thing. And um, this evening, oh. um, my evening fragrance was, right now is Tabac Rouge by Fade On. Like, nice. I think a younger version of uh, Tobacco Vanille, much easier to wear. Um, okay. Yeah, much easier to appreciate. I like that one a lot more. So, yep. Fair play. Woo. Lovely. Oh, and my punishment fragrance is the, the one Steven knows. This is a strong fragrance. This is Royal Leather. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, one spray yeah. of this will fill up a classroom. Two sprays will cause the fire alarm to go off. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty nuclear stuff there from uh, uh, BK. Uh, he's wearing BK Royal Leather, so that's going to be lovely uh, for him to spray. Oh, kitty. Hi. And uh, Brad has some company. Uh, he's a big boy, 20 pounds almost. <laughs> yeah, just like my cat uh, as well. No, that's lovely. Not just um, Jeremy that gets the pussy. Oh, oh, nice. Oh. Hey, nice, hey. nice. Come okay. on. All right, come down, come down. And anyway, and you guys know who I am. My name is Cascade Sense, Manny David. My nickname is my nickname is the standard or hashtag standard. You already know. And my sign of the day is this right here. It's yeah. Dragonfly by Zoologist Perfumes. Lovely, lovely springtime scent. And I was feeling it today because it was super bright where I live, um, like a few hours ago. And uh, it's still going strong, thankfully. So, lovely scent right there. I don't have a punishment fragrance because this is not about me. This is about you guys right here. <laughs> so, I will be your host, of course, and we might as well get on with today's game. Now, I'm going to request in the comment section below that you guys... I mean, you can feel free to play along and stuff if you want. But as of you guys, the contestants um, in the stream right now, like my, my fellow castmates, uh, try to go off of your own uh knowledge as far as uh these questions go and uh once i ask these questions for the sake of transparency i'm going to request that you do this so you guys can't be typing so you can't say yes or no unless your hands are up. Yeah, okay i love it the whole yeah. time so uh the first question goes to uh my good friend too fresh so too fresh okay. are, oh god <laughs> uh, actually no no we're gonna go with the we're, we're gonna go with the guest of honor today we're gonna go with okay. steven yeah, all right so i'm ready go with so the professor. Should I? So, um, question number one, again, everyone gets two questions each, and the reward is if um, you go two for two, and only two for two, you get a 30-second plug. So, I can't mm. wait for you all to potentially plug what you guys have on board, but again, you have to go two for two. So, first question, to the professor. As of today, and since its release, Gabrielle by Chanel is currently Sephora's best-selling perfume in the USA. True or false? Wow. Now, this is false. <laughs> uh, I, I would say true. You are correct. Okay. <laughs> so true, hey. true in second place, it's uh, Coco Mademoiselle, which is typically number one, and then followed by Flower Bomb and Black Opium. So Stephen is safe. No punishment fragrance for him. Uh, wow. So uh, shout outs to Davidoff, but nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> And at this point, we are going to go alphabetical. So, uh, next person on the list, next person on the list is my good friend Ashen. Ashen, hands up. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so, your question is this, and if it, like, I don't know why this just happened. Just give me one sec. Okay, according to the House of Creed, watermelon is officially advertised as a note for Millisim Imperial. True or false? False. The answer is false. Apparently, what forms the yeah. accord is bergamot, 
green mandarin, and lemon to form that watermelon like cord. Okay, so uh, you are so safe, good. my friend. Um, is there uh, anyone here that would have said true by any chance? Uh, Hell no. Okay, so <laughs> so we know what's going on. <laughs> Smells like so, it, though. It does smell like it, yes. Maybe yes. regular melon. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe potentially, yeah. <laughs> especially when Mel is actually in a real class. So that's something to think about. Um, never any anyway. Um, I just again, asked. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, check this out. So we got uh, the next person up. Uh, we have uh, two fresh up now. Oh, uh, <laughs> two fresh. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Your question is, and I'm going to request that you put your hands up for this, of course. All right. So your question, which I love, allure on okay. by Chanel. Debuted in the 21st century. True or false? Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, so... That's uh, false. That's false. Okay. Your... Correct. It was debuted in 1999. Yes. Okay, I knew it was, uh, it was, it was close. I knew it was right on the edge. I knew it was it, 90s, though. You know, what, you know what's the best part, guys? Is that he wasn't even born. Because he's 12. <laughs> I <laughs> know uh, I wasn't even a, an idea yet at that point. Man. Hey, hey, hey. Twinkle in your father's eye. Lol. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um. So moving on, we have my good old friend from Manchester. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Okay. Georgie. Yep. Your question. Yep. ISO E Super is an yep. aroma chemical that is actually officially trademarked. True or false? True. It is definitely true. Actually trademarked by the IFF. So you yep. are safe. You are actually safe. I think I made this too wow. easy. Good Lord. That <laughs> is, unfortunately, you're, had it, you're dealing with a guy who's been trained in stuff like that. So Yes. Mm. I mean, I, I, I didn't like tailor these questions to any of y'all. It's just like I have them like randomly. Yeah. Random, so yeah. uh, next up, and hands up, my friend. Time for the talk about James. <laughs> okay, James. Um, Nike Athletics was founded on January 25th, 1964, which predates the separate perfume company of the same name. True or false? Uh, what? True. And you are incorrect. Okay. Yeah. False. Uh, yeah. According to Fragrantica, Nike perfumes debuted back in 1929. Uh, 29. Ridiculous. <laughs> so, Spanish perfume company debuted back in 1929. So, your punishment for Nike. Okay. Here we go. Costume National. Um, EDP. Mm. Loki likes it, guys. No, it's close <laughs> though. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, hey, I heard it. Oh, I love it. I can smell it. <laughs> I can smell from here. And uh, from here, I mean, I'm not too far because, you know, James and I are like 100 kilometers within each other. Yeah, well, I'm across the pond and I can smell it. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, so right now we have uh, one for ones across the board except for James and Tim because Tim's yet to go. And Tim, you are up next, my friend. I'm so joining hands you, up. James. Joining hands you, soon. Up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's your question, sir. The house of Amwaj's actual country of origin is Saudi Arabia. True or false? Uh, false. Okay. And the answer is actually false because their country of origin is, of course, uh, Oman. Oman. Yes. Oh, so, man. Oh, man. I see what you did there. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> All righty. So it yeah. uh, looks like you guys are pretty safe for plug so far, except for my friend James. Uh, <laughs> we still love the X Man. X Men's in the building, of course. All right, and we are moving on to the uh, second round. Second round, and of course, we have our guest of honor, who is uh, back for his second go at it. Okay. All right. Uh, hands up. You ready? Yep. <laughs> okay. Sergio Momo is the man behind the brands Perfumum Roma, Suspiro, and Zerjoff. True or false? False. Not Perfumum Roma, but the other two. That is definitely. <laughs> False. His other brand that he's actually behind is Kemi Blending Magic, not Perfume. Yeah. Well. Very good. Awesome. <laughs> very good. Tricky. Beast mode. Very, very good. Very good stuff from uh, the professor himself. So he's going to have his 30 second plug in just a bit, but we will get to everyone else. Okay. So, Ashton, hands up. You ready? Ready. <laughs> okay. Outside of the Versace Puram line, 
Versace has not released a fragrance only targeted towards men in the last four years. True or false? Uh, I'm trying to go back through everything that they've made in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'll say true. It's got to be a time limit. Come on. (laughs) Oh, I answered. Did you not hear me? You said true. You said true? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The answer is... True. The last non-VPH men's fragrance is Eros, and that was 2012. More than four years. Uh, so, was, Ashen was is safe. On that one, man. <laughs> yes, he was wavering, but he came through in the clutch, as we would expect from uh, Ash Ketchum himself. Anyway. Oh, you didn't expect it from me? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I didn't. I'm sorry. Fair <laughs> point. All right, moving on. We have two fresh. Too fresh. Okay. Hands up. You ready? Going too fresh. Two for two. Let's. Oh, let's go. okay. You got this. All right. Okay. Too fresh. Your question is, or your um, true or false is, mm. Labo City exclusives are only available worldwide throughout the month ma- throughout the month of October. True or false? Oh man. You know I don't I don't like Labo. I don't have anything from them. I don't know these things. All right. So is. Only through the month of October. Um, I'm going to say false because that seems like a dumb idea. But at the same time, <laughs> who knows? I'm going to okay. say false, though. Answer <laughs> is false. You're right. Yes. But they actually have their fragrances that are set exclusives available throughout the month of September worldwide, not October. Oh. Yes. So well, that, 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 I got lucky. I dodged a bullet with that one. Hey, you know what? Um, you're too fresh and you're two for two, so you take what you can see. <laughs> All right. Moving on to uh, Georgia's last and final round. Are you ready, sir? Hands up. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. This is yours, and I hope you enjoy it. The 2009 La Nuit de L'Homme Eau de Toilette is the first flanker ever to L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. True or false? Yeah, I'd go with true. The mm-hmm. answer is, and according to Fragantica, false. Really? The yeah. first ever flanker to That's Lom fun. by Yves Saint Laurent is the 2007 Lom O de Te. Oh, wow. wow. Fair enough. Yeah, so never, punishment never, right never, heard, never heard of that one. <laughs> never heard of that either. Fair enough. Um, oh, here we go. I do actually like this one, but not at 20 past midnight on a Monday morning. Okay. So uh, <laughs> two, two sprays, two sprays. Here we go. Two sprays. I saw the clutch. There we go. Are you satisfied? Yes. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, I want to ask, uh, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen, did you know about that fragrance? Do you know about that lump flanker? No. No, it's not really one that gets talked about a lot, you know? No. That's because it never, was never heard of it. Only yeah, it was released really, for a month. It was only released for <laughs> that summer. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Lom O Date. It's funny because there's brands who will do that for random summer flankers, of course. Of course, Lodi Say. Uh, known for it. Uh, yes, um, Lodi Say will do that. You say Miyake. Um, Givenchy did that too with um, Parisian Break for the gentleman only line last year. Mm-hmm. So, Invictus uh, Aqua. Invictus Aqua is another thing. So um, this summer uh, exclusivity is actually a lot of fun for, uh, you know, rather affordable designer offerings. Something I wish I, I got into more often, but in the country I live in, in Canada, we don't get stuff uh, soon enough sometimes. So that's why I really haven't heard of or you know remotely tried any of these, but I do like Invictus Aqua myself. Uh, anyway, moving on to uh, James's final round. X-Men, are you ready? Hands up. Heck yeah, dude. Okay, just to salvage a point. Spice Bomb and its flankers are currently the only fragrances targeted towards men in production by Victor and Rolf. True or false? Currently? True or false, currently. Okay. Um, I hate my life. True. <laughs> Answer is true, because the last <laughs> that's that, is still, that, that, that was discontinued was Antidote. Antidote, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so they literally have nothing outside of Spice Bomb for just you, men. Uh, so you are safe. Yes. So no more costume. That's now. Um, See you uh, later. 
But yes, um, they do have a series of unisex fragrances if anyone is interested, and because they apparently have an exclusive level line, which I have yet to try myself. Mm -hmm. I've tried them. They're they're pretty they're pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I'll well, give them a look one day. Sick. All right, Tim. And uh, speaking of that, it is your turn, and it is the final question of this this game, this short ass game, because there's a lot of this game. We got a lot of material to get through. All right, Tim. Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford is a private blend collection launch title. True or false? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hands up. Neroli Portofino by Tom Ford is a private blend collection launch title. True or false? Uh, true. Your answer is correct. Yay. True. Along with Amber Absolute, Black Violet, Bois Rouge, Japon Noir, Most Breche, oh. Noir de Noir, Oud Wood, Purple Patchouli, Tobacco Vanille, Tuscan Leather, Velvet Gardenia, and Neroli Portofino make up the opening launch titles for the Private Blend Collection back in 2007 for Tom Ford. Back yeah. in the days when it was affordable. Yeah. Some yeah. of those are worth some crazy money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that out of the ones that are still available from there, uh, we have Noir de Noir, Oud Wood, Tobacco Vanille, Tuscan Leather, just four of them. That's really nice. so, and I've uh, got I've got three of them. Hey, <laughs> I think we all have at least two or three of these. To be yeah, honest. yeah, yeah. So there's that. So anyway, team like Yukuwam. Team, team like Yukuwam. Like yeah, team like <laughs> Okay, so uh, in the chat, I'm I'm gonna post something right now before everyone is able to uh, uh, get their uh, thoughts out as far as their plugs. But I'm gonna let people know. Hashtag La Yukuwam boys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like easy, easy. Like Yellow Key Mama has got to be like one of the best clones ever released in the fragrance uh, world history. I agree. As far as uh, the there. grass, as far as the grassroots fragrance community, yes, I'd love to yeah. see a more mainstream Western designer actually have the balls to clone something <laughs> as funny mm -hmm. as that is. Because like you know, I, I love being able to tell people, hey, I'm wearing like Tuscan leather or something like that, um, or like a clone of it, and they haven't tried it because they don't have access to it unless they're willing to blind buy something off of something you said. So, um, uh, I, who knows? You know, we have all these endless clones there's of the like, uh, Versace Oud Noir. Yeah, I mean, there's that uh, or for for Oud Wood or whatnot. But um, yeah. I mean, we don't see Western like takes on you know Tuscan leather or Ventus yet, and I want to see that. I think that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, we are at the point where we are able to plug our channels. If you went two for two, so starting with the guest of honor today, the professor, please. You have 30 seconds from now. Go. All right. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Redolescence. Uh, you can find my channel on YouTube slash Redolescence, R-E-D-O-L-E-S-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. And I would also like to say that if you are available on February 23rd and 24th, and if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, please come to what used to be known as StyleCon. It's now known as Menfluential. I will be one of the speakers there. I look forward to meeting you guys. Wow. Oh, Very nice. good. Awesome. 25 seconds. <laughs> Nicely done. Next <laughs> up, who do we have? Uh, Mr. Too Fresh. Mr. Too Fresh. What's up, guys? It's Too Fresh. Or I'm supposed to be Triple Ink, but it's AKA Too Fresh. So, yeah, um, we have a lot of videos coming out for me, including a collaboration with a Team Top 5 member, um, in a video coming up. I'm not going to tell you which team member it, 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 it is, but you're going to have to wait and, and uh, find out in that video that's going to be dropping. Uh, I got a fall starting lineup video coming for you guys as well. My fall niche list is coming out in the beginning of November as well. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a really fun time. And I think that's pretty much it for me, just some videos coming out finally. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Too Fresh. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see. Who went two for two as well? Good old friend, George. Oh, Ashton. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Not George. Yeah. <laughs> Killer. Sorry, George. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, Jen Sin's channel, of course. My nickname is Ash Ketchum because I, I like Pokemon, I guess. Um, <laughs> I've got a, a, a TJ Maxx slash Ross review that I did today. Um, there's the weekly news video that I put out. Um, I'm going to do my most worn of uh, this month, probably in a week or so. And then I'm going to get on the uh, top 10 most complimented for this year nice. train choo -choo. in the next like week and a half or so. So all those should be coming up fairly soon. Fair play. Looking forward to it, yeah. fam. The original fragrance news video. That's right. Yes. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Uh -huh. And <laughs> moving on to the next two for two and the final two for two. My Asian brethren, 
Let's go. Hey. So guys, channel imagine sent, and I finally made a schedule for myself. Now I'm releasing video every three days, so every three days a new video is out. Right now my most current video is the first impression on Suave, the clone of Lionel Lum. So you haven't seen that yet, and you want to know what the fragrance kind of smell like in the opening. You can check that out on my channel. All right, sounds good. Yes. Thank you. And I will of be course uh, uploading a 12-minute clip of me throwing it in a bathtub. Uh, <laughs> of Oh, okay. See, that's not George, really a plug. George, didn't you get sprayed? <laughs> get plug, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, that's not really a plug because he's denigrating himself. He's got, you know, um, all the thumbs down he will get. I'm playing. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that segment. Thank you for tuning in so far. We are Team Top 5 featuring Red Lessons. So cool to have him here along with the squad. And uh, much love, as always, for tuning in. Uh, and I understand that a lot of you guys are tuning in from other time zones and stuff. And I know it's tough to um, to do this, especially for someone who's actually in the show, like my good friend George here. So, um, Because it's like literally uh, midnight where he's at. Half past midnight. Half past. Yeah. So he's a... Wow. He's a soldier for that. But uh, it's at that time of the video where I'd love for you guys to get involved. If you have any questions, please let us know in the chat. If uh, there aren't enough questions right now, what I will do is, um, you know, get into our main discussion of the episode. And I uh, can't wait for you to, um, to do that. But um, I guess I will while you guys ask some questions away. And I will make sure to retrieve some of those for future Q&A within this cast. We're going to try to keep it uh, short with uh, how many people we have here as well but uh thank you guys for tuning in you guys have been lovely and of course team Todd members feel free to interact with the stream monsters in chat because they are awesome so uh this is going to be really cool guys anyway if you guys have any uh, questions again just let us know please otherwise we will get to the main discussion right now and that is why designer fragrances have failed in 2017 and the reason oh, i'm saying uh, and the reason i'm yeah. saying that as far That's as like failed is because let's be real i'm looking at all these designer complimented lists or whatnot or just top 10 lists and stuff and uh you're not seeing a lot of 27 releases on here uh, it's mainly stuff from last year or in uh, years past of course and uh, i think it's an important healthy discussion to have with the state of where um, you know, mainstream perfumery is right now. Um, you have beauty divisions of various companies like Chanel and Dior who are um, reporting, uh, you know, um, a downswing economically in the last quarter or the last year, uh, which is really compelling for me as a luxury goods consumer, not just in fragrances, but as far as other things too. And I'm trying to figure out why this is. So uh, is it is everything tied in as far as like it's kind of hard for these brands to differentiate themselves uh, as far as aesthetic and as far as perfumery goes itself? Um, I think it goes, it doesn't go that deep because I feel like a lot of these people are starting to smell the same um, is, ge is genuinely how I feel about this. But the questions I want to ask you guys, if anything, are this. Why are there not as many prolific designer level fragrances being released in 2017? What happened and why? What needs to change and predictions for next year? So I'll give the floor to my good friend, Red Lessons, our uh, guest of honor today. So uh, the professor, uh, how do you feel about this topic and why? Well, I actually, I do agree with you uh, to start things off. I was saying this to uh, Manny behind the scenes, but I had shot a video last year called my top 10 releases of 2016. And I was so proud to be able to say that so many of them were original releases. And now when I look through the list, it's Amen Criminals, Chrome Pure, Aqua Atlantique, Armani Code Colonia, Your Own Sport 2017, Gucci Guilty Absolute, and the list goes on and on. And these are all fragrances that are flankers. And uh, truth be told, some of them are good. Like I think uh, Prada's Luna Rosa Carbon is pretty good if you're a fan of Dior Sauvage and fragrances that fit that bill. Um, but I think a lot of it is just kind of going along with the trends, you know, and uh, even when we take a look at an original release like CK Obsessed, it's really just going off of something that was released many, many years ago, which is obsession, but trying to modernize it. And they took the DNA of every sort of tonka bean, sweet, coumarin, like bubblegum fragrance that's been released in the past five years. And uh, in many ways, it is a disappointment. I know there are people out there who are in love with fragrances of that genre, but um, as far as it's concerned, you know, hopefully they're working on something now for the next two years because we know that the average fragrance takes anywhere between six months to two years to be released. So um, I don't know. I hope we have a wave of really interesting fragrances next year or the year after. Yeah. 
Alrighty. So I'll get into your predictions as well in just a bit, but I want to get everyone's thoughts uh, immediately. Like what comes to mind when it comes to these brands uh, reporting, you know, uh, like a loss and stuff like that and why when it comes to their beauty divisions and whatnot. So uh, uh, we'll start um, from left to right, I guess. Uh, Mr. Too Fresh, how do you feel about this topic? All right. So I can definitely see like a big drop um, in the sales of like designer companies. I think a lot of consumers are heading over the niche routes just because uh, if you look at the niche fragrances, yes, they are more expensive, but they offer a lot more originality and uniqueness with their scents, I guess, better quality. And uh, to be honest, I kind of have personally found myself diving into a lot more niche scents because I kind of take a look, especially this year, um, of what designer scents have been released. And really the only one to me of um, any worth is like Aqua Atlantique. And still, this isn't even that unique. To be honest, you know, it has that Dior Sauvage, Versace Dome Blue type of a um, vibe to it. And I don't know. I mean, I think designer fragrances, I think they're due for another big year in 2018. It seems like, you know, they'll they'll have a big year like in 2016. And then maybe they'll have an off year where not a lot of companies re release a whole lot of things, let's say 2017. And then maybe next year they're going to bounce back. But for, for right now, I see a lot of um, consumers going the niche route instead of designers for more unique fragrances to smell different. And I think that's part of the reason why their sales are down. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Um, Ashton, how do you feel about this topic? I mean, how, mu how much are other sales down? Do we know? Uh, like our, the our stats aren't down, down, but they, they've, they've were, all, all I've seen from the, t the, the articles, especially one that uh, Nick Stewart posted on Facebook a while ago, um, is that uh -huh. it's just reported a loss. Like, so we're talking okay. LVMH. You know, people like that. It's just a yeah. loss. We're just trying to ex explain why it's come from like the beauty divisions per, per se, uh, specifically perfume. If there's anything, um, you know, that in regards to that, um, like, uh, is the lack of originality a factor to the losses? Possibly. Um, it, it depends on the person, I guess. Yes. So when you when you look at the releases, a lot of them are like Stephen said, just flankers at this point. Um, yeah. Gets hyped at all as a friggin' flanker at this point. And the the things that most people at this point, when you're talking designers, are are flankers. And even the new releases are completely unoriginal. Like Code for Men came out, and I have it, um, and it's not a bad fragrance, but it smells damn close to Jimmy Choo. And so, and Jimmy Choo in turn smells close to fragrances that we're talking about Fleur de Chanel etc etc all, all in the same family the same vein um, and I just reviewed and that was kind of people were a little bit excited in the community like well maybe it's something different and it's kind of unoriginal it's like Lana Widolomo electric is like yes um, so yeah, there's kind of a lack of originality, and I think what a lot of this is is fragrance companies looking at stuff that's selling, and then they go, well, we need our version of that, so we'll just kind of tweak it and then release the same crap. And for the average person out there, that's probably fine because they're going to smell good to like 95% of people. Um, it's a complete lack of originality at this point when it comes to designer releases. <laughs> um, so I mean, that may be part of it. A lot of the crap is going to smell the same at this point. When if you're completely uninformed and you go out to Sephora or something like that, be on the same riff, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not like you have this like when Aqua de Jo came out and everybody was like, "Oh my God, Aqua de Jo, got to get that." There's nothing like that hitting right now. Yep. Really new, uh, <laughs> slightly genre pushing and yet highly accessible at the same time kind of fragrance that's coming out in the designer world right now. Yeah, I because Aqua de Jo kind of changed everything up you know i completely empathize and agree with that mainly because of the fact that if you are copying everyone else for the sake of you know trying to get in on their sales okay that's one thing um but what are you doing that's better than that you know so uh, yeah to, to prove a point that way i feel like it's kind of hard but at the same time uh i think the best route is pretty much what you said like let's do something different and is act as accessible have we really expended all of our options as far as this the designer world um is yeah. i think the question uh george how do you feel about that okay so you're gonna have to give me a bit of time to say what i have to say <laughs> not too much time all right all right, all right. <laughs> 
<coughs> so for those of you who do not know, I have worked intimately in the industry for six years now. Um, I have been in sales. I have been trained by Christian Dior, not himself personally, he's dead, but the company <laughs> Christian Dior. Um, there are two things going on. First of all, designer fragrances are dead. And this, this death Brutal. has been happening slowly, um, surely, uh, throughout the years. And there's two reasons why. The first thing is, it's Creed Aventus didn't help. Uh, when Creed Aventus came out, um, a lot of different things kind of changed within the industry. But the biggest thing that designers are, the, the biggest challenge that they have is IFRA. And I've met with IFRA and I've spoken to them. And the thing is, is that dermatologists want all ingredients banned now, right? They want a lot of different ingredients, a lot of different things just completely uh, knocked off the face of the earth. They've tried to ban vanilla. They've tried to ban lavender. They nearly banned oak moss. And this is absolutely crippling everybody. And designers have got two choices. I mean, the, the prices go up constantly. And the reason being is because it's harder to actually get these essential oils to be in their fragrances and actually smell correct. <clears throat> so with all of this happening, what they have to do is they have to go, you know what, screw it, we give in, right? And the fragrances do not smell uh, original because there's nothing left for them to work with. Yeah. Because everything's being banned. Everybody's offended by fragrance. And the main thing is, is you've got Creed, you've got Amouage, you've got niche. People don't understand how much niche is absolutely murdering designer in, in the numbers, in the revenue, in the prices. I mean, think about it. Creed can sell Viking for $500. Do you know how much money that makes? And that consumer is not then going to go over to YSL. So these designers are being, their budgets are being destroyed. Especially with advertising. Their budgets yeah. are being destroyed, whilst at the same time they're being banned, mm -hmm. these ingredients, the natural oils. So at this point, designers are going, you know what, fine then. We're not playing. We're not going to do it. it, it if you're going to cut everything, if you're going to cut the budget, if you're going to cut ingredients, we're not even going to bother. We're not even going to play the game. And that is the, the true problem of what's going on. There's other things to say, but obviously I want to give uh, people uh, time and stuff like that. But the main issue is the consumer now cares more about, because they're more like health conscious and they want natural stuff. That's a bit of a factor as well. People want higher quality stuff. People want to People want to get what they pay for, and Definitely. ingredients are being banned. And this is absolutely killing the designer industry. Yep. No, like people have actually turned to me who are like way more casual about the fragrance approach, and they're like, oh, my favorite fragrance doesn't last anymore. Do you have any ideas? I'm like, okay, well, this is part of why I got into alternative uh, strands of perfumery myself. Uh, mainly because I was tired of the same tropes and or when um, you know, those same tropes aren't as strong anymore, you know, because things are clearly controlled by IFRA. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, that being, sorry. Sorry, no. sorry. I just, I just want to say two things. Um, because of the fact that I've worked within the industry, this is what happened two years ago when these products started coming out. People, the counter managers were terrified. They were terrified of the low quality stuff, right? The low quality juice, the low quality fragrance that was coming in. And they were scared because they thought, I'm going to lose commission, I'm going to lose money. Now, they don't care as much because these companies are instructing the account managers and the salespeople, don't worry about fragrance. Don't worry about it. It's not a priority to us. Just worry about makeup. So they're changing their focus to makeup and fashion. And they're going, uh, creedal. Creed, just leave it to creed. Leave it to the niche people. That makes a lot of sense to me, mainly because um, when it comes to fashion uh, or anything aesthetically, if something's bothering someone, they can just avert their eyes. Like scent will always affect yep. everyone around you if it performs. So yep. uh, this um, war against fragrance makes a lot of sense to me. There uh, is a war, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, 
I dis I have a disdain for the war, of course, because I am passionate about expressing myself through scent. But I get it. I empathize with it for sure. Uh, James, how do you feel about this? I think you have a really interesting perspective, mainly because uh, it's not like you're uh, working white collar yourself. <laughs> so um, about um, how safe everything is and uh, why it might be failing these companies. So how do you feel? So there's obviously trends in fragrances, right? A couple of years ago, the year of the Tonka, um, which was which was Cool. If you like sweet fragrances, this year was the basically the year of Sauvage, <laughs> Sauvage clones. Yeah. Generics. It was big year for all generic fragrances. The big problem with generics is Sucks. they're generic. They they don't have any distinguishing characteristics. At least with Tonka Bean, there's a lot of ways you can interpret that note. Uh, but if you're if you're looking at a, you know, a Luna Rosa Carbon, <laughs> Aqua Atlantique, all those all those all these recent releases, they're all just very you know they're carbon copies so for the fragrance community it's very discouraging to see that happen because you're like well why why would i get a fragrance that smells exactly like sauvage mm. you know and i get why they do it obviously because sauvage was very popular it sold extremely well and continues to sell well um and that's why for people that care about uniqueness they gravitate towards niche however the problem is is because of that uptick in niche, now niche prices are going up because capitalism, supply and demand. Um, so that's kind of concerning as well, right? So Tom Ford's are more expensive, obviously Creed up their prices. Um, I think moving forward, designer fragrances will smarten up and, and realize that you can't just be a blatant copycat. It doesn't pay off in the end. Maybe it's a short-term gain. You'll sell a lot in the beginning, but then people will catch on. And um, hopefully that'll stabilize the market a bit, and then niche prices will be like, "Hey, we're, we're charging way too much now," because uh, designers will be actually. Again. Yeah, no, I, I feel that too. Um, especially when you mentioned a lack of originality, uh, there are certain things that have come up with uh, like a huge backing as far as advertising that um are actually supposed to be like original. For example, so like Gabrielle by Chanel, that's original, but like yeah. it, it, but it's like besides its sales and. Uh, mainly due to its uh, killer advertising, I think the blowback has ultimately been pretty, pretty poor from people who've actually yeah. bought it. You know, it's it doesn't last, or you know, tuberose is like you know overplayed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Is there anything about not only not original, but is there is like a, is there a disconnect between certain uh, cornerstone brands and today's consumer as far as smelling the way consumers want? to be smelled because like a lot of people think that's like a rather, you know, old school scent. Um, is that a concern for, for brands moving forward? Um, can I just say three really quick things? Yes. Three really quick things. I'm, I'm sorry, Manny. I know really quick, really quick. All right. So this is what, this is what's happening. The number one thing is this. People, I just saw some comments and people said, well, we need originality and that'll get people interested. The thing is, is that the ingredients are limited as in, the um, amount of ingredients that you that a, fra a fragrance company can use are completely restricted. So you that's why things are becoming more generic and less original and more samey because literally you're only allowed to use these set of ingredients which will make the same fragrance over and over and over again until the very end. That's why the originality has gone down. Second thing is this retail is dying. Retail is completely dying because of the internet. Yeah. And the problem is, if you have all that and you have the third thing, which is people will go to niche, is designer, it's a snowball effect. And designer will continually, it's almost like cancer. And it's mm -hmm. like a sort of a, a terminal disease. Designer will die mm -hmm. um, if it's not careful, if it can't bring it back. Well, you know what, though? I don't think that's a huge issue for me because, you know, I don't want to sound like an SJW, but I think the fragrance world uh, can be a little gender fluid in regards to its sure. classification as designer versus niche. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, don't, I really think there's there's not really a need to do it anymore because with the emergence of indie houses, there's there's so much gray area now. So yeah. I think you know fragrances should just be viewed as fragrances because there's there's been so many arguments I've had with people about what constitutes. You know, it's a niche and I, versus a designer. And I know you and I have it's, had those conversations. And why? I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, I understand that ingredients, you know, are limited and they're being banned. But 
indie and niche houses are doing a great job, especially indie houses, because they're not charging crazy niche prices, yet they're putting out some pretty creative stuff. Well, also, they're not controlled by, like, um, you know, they're making their own stuff. It's That's not true. like they're commissioning flavors from the IFF or Givaudan or, uh, um, you know, from niche or anything like that. So um, my question is, like, to anyone here who knows it, before I get to Timmy, um, does – does these like major mainstream luxury goods brands do they have um are they more regulated uh, as far as what they're able to use rather than creed who will primarily do their own stuff is it like because like george mentioned that when it comes to uh like you know the designers it's it's as if they feel more controlled like so why are they that versus these uh, other, you know, so-called mainstream niche brands. Maybe, maybe it's because it's a bigger company. There's more, more people involved. There's a higher chain of command. Um, you know, that they're probably dis more disconnected from their clientele. Um, mm -hmm. Indie and niche houses, because their primary focus is fragrance. That's all they focus on, and therefore mm -hmm. they have more attention to detail, perhaps. Yeah, that's, but as far as the control of what they're able to do, why are they more creative, um, based on, you know, the argument of not having your hands tied as far as ingredients and whatnot why is that the case for you know mainstream brands i don't really necessarily think it's because of that um because of uh you know i don't think their their hands are tied necessarily it's more mm -hmm. so it's just you know bought like we need to pay our creditors <laughs> what what's going to sell that's that's okay. kind of their yeah yeah, yeah. And, you know yeah, no, so i can definitely see that it's just <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what can you do, right? It's it just it's just yeah. hard because um, you need to sell, but what you're selling isn't really selling because it's at the point where we're copying each other too much. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about that, Tim? Well, uh, on to the, the topic of why I think the this, the sales going down, right? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if this is uh, actually a good point or not, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. We lost Olivier Polge. <laughs> we we lost like one of the biggest <laughs> trendsetters in designer realm to Chanel. So I, I I feel like that could very well be like a part of it, because um with him he always he never really released anything like in, to my knowledge. Of course I don't know every single fragrance he released that um that are like not trendsetters. He released generally trendsetting fragrances. So and the loss of him to Chanel was like to to me that's, that 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 was that was the thing that this interests me from the designer realm ever since I heard the news. And um, since I already know that this year was going to be a fresh year, like I was like yeah, we, immediately we uninterested because I knew like I talked to Manny about this, this is going to be the worst year for fragrances ever since like the beginning of the year. And um, it turns out that it, it, it happened to be one of the worst year for fragrances because I don't know. Uh, there's, there's no originality. Like uh, and a lot of people said, and I know what George says is true too, like the ingredients and all that, but and there's also the pressure of a pig, you, you know what what James yeah, said. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're I mean, they're, they're having they're having like a they have a lot of ropes <laughs> tying tying yeah, their yeah. hands for sure. Yeah. And uh, with bigger companies, it's so hard for them to like um, have to release something that's really really unique because they have all these things that they have to worry about, and they really would not want to take the risk. Now with yeah. niche brands and indie brands. That's all they do. They have to set trends. They can't release the same thing over and over again because their brand would get forgotten. That's They're not right. going to make any revenue off anything else. They don't sell clothes. They don't sell shoes. So the fragrances is all they, they have, and they constantly have to put out good things, like you know, barrier-breaking things that would interest people to keep coming back to their yeah. brand. And I think it's with the accessibility of niche fragrances now, it's actually just as accessible as designer fragrances they in terms of big houses like them. Creed, Unwash, everything, they're all online now. If you go into Nordstrom, like no joke, Nordstrom nowadays, like a lot of those fragrances in Nordstrom are niche fragrances. Yeah. Like in my last Vegas, Nordstrom Most is probably one of the biggest, yeah, like one of the biggest Nordstrom in, in the US. A majority of the fragrances are niche. Um, designer fragrances are not really displayed all too much. <laughs> the only places that still sell a bunch of designers in America to me is like Sephora. Macy's. Who still does and even Sephora yeah. is carrying niche now. Yeah, and they're slowly niche. adding more and more niche to the line, like um, Atelier's Cologne, Tom Ford. There's mm -hmm. the Sephora here in Las Vegas has now Givenchy exclusive line. They're slowly going to distribute Givenchy exclusive 
pretty much everywhere. So there, a lot more creative scents are getting smelled by the general public, and now they're now discovering that wow, like, these, like I want to know more about these. There, there's so many interesting things. Like, you know, they're they're just been open to a whole new world of fragrances, and and it's because and because the designer world have not released anything interesting this year at all, in my personal opinion, that that's why like people are gravitating towards niche. So because some it's, people it's also as accessible and designers not grabbing their attention enough. So Plus some the big, big right. releases of oh, sorry Maddie, let me I'm gonna finish this really quick. And yeah. also this is a big year for niche because Viking and fucking fabulous. Tom Ford created a storm when fucking fabulous came out and I I and that no doubt brought a ton of eyes into the niche world. Because people who never really considered niche fragrances before, they saw that news and like, I want to try that fragrance. Even though I don't like fragrances, I want to see what it smells like. You know, I want to know what it smells like. Mm -hmm. It's fucking fabulous. Like, and then there's Viking, of course. Everyone in the niche community who loves Aventus, or who knows the brand of Creed, they're all like waiting for Viking to come out. So there's been a lot of eyes that were, you know, brought the new eyes that were brought to the niche community this year, plus the designer realm not releasing anything interesting. I think that's why the sales of fragrances have gone down. Yeah. So the gimmickry is a big thing for me too. Uh, I, t I totally agree because it at least brings eyes to uh, that level of perfumery. And uh, I'm one of those people who still won't call Tom Ford private blend collection niche, if you know what I'm saying. But, <laughs> oh, at, the end, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm just saying, you smell, you smell um, fabulous and you're like, uh, I mean, it's not that niche, is it? That being said, um, I, I think that's interesting, mainly because, uh, you know, Look at the same tropes that keep being used in fragrances. I get uh, why these fragrances uh, that are safe will sell mainly because they have an accessible smell. But um, a lot of the times I'm trying to figure out how uh, does advertising have anything to do with it? Because a lot of them have the same names, Lom, Uomo, Man, Puram, stuff like that. It's just like, I feel like as far as casual fragrance users too, I feel like a lot of that has to do um, with what they purchase as well. Like, you know, how many things are called Savage or O Savage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And again, Puram, Um, Uomo, you know, for men, you know, stuff like that. I think that it's just harder to differentiate yourself in the designer world now. And sometimes people um, are no longer the one clone type of guys and they're willing to branch out. And sometimes you know it's what? not always in the designer level. Uh, yes, James. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's also, it's a clear sign that our community is growing. Because the the more niche uh, picks up in popularity, the more you know the general public is actually aware of it and, and using it. So I think it could be viewed as a positive. You know, it's um, it's funny that you said that um, because I yeah. I'm not sure. I, I I wish it was because of the community. Because but I, I look at our numbers and I'm like I think a, a celebrity who tells someone that they're wearing a fragrance and like you know you know, uh, Harper's Bazaar or something like that. I uh, like, for example, I've discovered how many by off of those, uh, magazines and stuff. So I feel like celebrity culture is, uh, partially why some of these mainstream niche brands are popping yeah, off. Um, I'm about the community itself though. Cause you mentioned that, um, like, uh, forgive me for being cynical about it just cause like, I don't feel like we have that much influence yet. Uh, maybe Jeremy fragrance, but I hope it's our community. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm afraid yeah, that me too. not, completely true what is actually happening is that designers are being seen as old hat and as cheap the the perception and the side guys especially in places like uh london and manchester and liverpool which are the ma major cities of the uk mm -hmm. so you'd, you'd oh, yeah. think that it would potentially translate is that things like chanel and uh, not necessarily dior dior's kind of surviving but chanel hugo boss gucci are uh, cheap uh, their low bar, their low brow. Um, mm. That is the overall perception. Uh, and that is because they're overly marketed, they're overly saturated, and people want, f people want to spend money on fragrance as a special thing. So they actually want to spend it on things like, oh, that Creed. Creed, Creed has done a lot of damage to the designer, and you cannot underestimate that. You cannot yeah. underestimate that statement. With the emergence of, um, I know retail is dying, but with the emergence of seeing niche fragrances at X amount of places, um, yeah. if Creed's there, it's going to sell. And you're right, yes. totally. Like, and I'm fairly close with a Creed rep myself, and I, I know how well Creed's doing. 
Absolutely. I just don't. I don't know how that's, how that's necessarily a terrible thing, though. Like, like I said, because no, if, no, it, as, as niche fragrances, thing. you know, do do well, it promotes creativity in in the in the industry, and we'll see less generics. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. right now it's hurting yeah. designers because they're they're still not motivated to do it yet. Maybe twenty, yeah. maybe twenty twenty eighteen. But speaking on that, I'd love to see what you guys think about certain brands and what you think they have to do. And I'm going to start with uh, our guest of honor again, Stephen. So um, I'd love to know, um, as far as uh, Chanel, if they're going to do anything for 2018 for, um, you know, uh, let's keep it uh, non-exclusive level. Uh, they really haven't done anything outside of uh, women's fragrances this year. Um, right. Of course, they debuted Gabrielle. But what do you think Chanel needs to do for both men and women next year? Well, I think that with Gabrielle, they invested a lot of resources, hiring Kristen Stewart, massive advertising campaign, and they dropped quite the pretty penny on it. And uh, I think with somebody like Olivier Polge, who I think his work in creativity, at least, is tantamount to that of Anique Minardo's, where they always seem to sort of push the envelope just far enough so that it doesn't cross that threshold into becoming something that people would just find a bit too strange. Um, so I think that they have a very valuable and a very talented resource on their team now. And uh, I would only hope that he does something to sort of break free from the mold because uh, I think up until now, Allure has really been their cash cow. And I think you have Allure Homme, Allure Homme Edition Blanche, and all of the various flankers, and they all smell great. But I think now we're looking for something that goes beyond that genre. And I think Olivier Polge, as long as he has the free will to do it, and sort of touching upon something that was mentioned earlier in this broadcast, is that who's, um, you know, who's really making the decisions when it comes to what kind of a fragrance do you put out? And I think the niche market is really thriving right now, one, because they can afford to put out fragrances that are very expensive. They have a high perceived value. So people look at them and they say, oh, wow, this is uh, X amount of dollars worth. It must be good. And I think designer fragrances, on the contrary, are kind of lacking in um, perceived value, although the quality is there. And I think in many cases, it's comparable to a lot of niche fragrances. But I think um, in the coming year, I would like to see... Olivier Polge put out a fragrance that will break free from the mold, something that is not just a cash cow, something that's not a money grab. And uh, truth be told, I know you were mentioning Givadon and Fermanish mm -hmm. and uh, another IFF earlier. Um, my, it might have been a year or two ago. I was looking online to see what some of the requirements would be to apply for a job as a chemist at one of these places. And one of the things at the very top of their list is you must have experience in GC and MS, which is gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. And I think even when you look at a brand like Michel Germain, they have a fragrance that smells like One Million, they have a fragrance that smells like Aquadigio, they have a fragrance that smells like Dior Sauvage. So all of these brands, you know, five years ago, I was living in this fantasy world where I thought that every company had their master perfumer who was sitting behind a perfumer's organ and they were working to create the perfect fragrance in X amount of years. Now I realize it's as simple as somebody or a creative director saying, hey, we want a fragrance that smells like this. You run it through a machine, you reverse engineer it, and now they say, well, can you tweak the concentration of this molecule so it doesn't smell exactly the same as its successful <laughs> predecessor, but that we yeah. can release it as our version almost? So Kind of like my scent of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like my son of the day um, but you know, sometimes yeah. it, it, it works and, and we want that especially if you can release a more affordable version of something but mm -hmm. I do want a new campaign I want something different and I'm, I'm hoping Chanel does that alright well said Great. lovely uh, moving on to my man Too Fresh alright yeah Stephen that was very interesting I didn't know that it was even possible to like reverse engineer a scent like that. I, I still was kind of under the logic that you were going um, for like, five years ago. Well, how do you think clones work? Yeah, exactly. see, everyone thought it was like, like yeah, magic stuff. pixie dust, stuff like it's, that, you know? It's I don't so know. easy now, yeah. He's so young. Yeah. <laughs> oh my um, God, Bradley. <laughs> but see, I should know how the world works better than this by now, but oh well. <laughs> He's Peter, 12. Pan, Peter Pan does it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Contrary to like pop, you know, I love my fresh fragrances. And that's what Chanel, I think, 
does a really great job of. But I think it's definitely time in 2018 for a new men's um, release that isn't a flanker of anything. It's a new original. So I would like to see them actually go something a little bit more interesting. Like maybe a Chanel Gourmand could be a nice change of pace because, you know, they got Blue to Chanel, Chanel Allure on the Extreme, and all the Allure line kind of stays on the fresh side more or less. Um, I think it would be pretty cool to see Chanel kind of, you know, and has Olivier Polge's hand at more of a gourmand type scent. I think yeah. that could really be interesting. And especially with Sauvage kind of dying down definitely from its release in 2015, I think it's time for Chanel to sort of reestablish himself um, up there with Dior and, you know, maybe even Creed, because, you know, Creed is up there. Those are like the three big fragrance houses that I think rank in the most money at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And as far as the women's side, I think Gabrielle is going to gain a little bit more traction as time sort of goes on, you know, just like with Buddha Chanel, it wasn't the most popular when it first came out, mm -hmm. but um, over a little bit of time, people started to really like it. And then it became the big thing for a little bit. Two Same thing with Gabrielle, I think. Yeah. It's going right. to, um, it's going to gain a little bit more traction in 2018, I think. And I think they're going to ride that wave and then sort of make something in 2019 for the women's side. That's going to be another big game changer, but. Chanel, just hopefully you will make a nice new men's original fragrance is all I ask in 2018. Yeah, you know, it's funny because like when they did make an original new men's fragrance, and I would argue that it is original in Bleu de Chanel, it's not like they released anything else since. <laughs> they made another uh, concentration of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. EDP and, and that's, that's it, it pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, who knows? Uh, moving on to uh, Ash. What's up? How do you feel about uh, Chanel what going up? forward? What do you think they're going to go with next year? Um, or what do you think they should do next year? Well, huh, so, you know, not that long ago, Gucci released Guilty Absolute, right? Yes, yeah. And most people would say that was a pretty large deviation from most of the stuff that we're seeing right now, most mm. of the releases that are coming out. And they caught a good amount of blowback. Um, I heard from some people in the community, uh, fellow reviewers that work in retail, that it was doing really horribly, <laughs> that it wasn't selling at all. Uh, basically that they put it out there and almost immediately were like, nope, we're not gonna push this at all because uh, it was too different and too out there. So when a major company does something like that, they do something different and then it's a complete bomb. I think that's probably going to send a message to other companies that, you know, stay in your lane, to be accessible to well, look at Ego East. almost Just, everybody. You know. Yeah, so um, realistically, what do I think they'll do? Um, they'll probably come out with something that's high quality, like everything that they do. Um, that's super people-pleasing, mass-pleasing kind of scent. Maybe, I mean, a little bit different. Maybe not an Embroxen bomb or anything like that, but go way out on a limb, unfortunately. Embroxen boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use Ambroxan, call it ambergris. Hey. Um, hey. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Yeah. Realistically, that's probably what they're gonna do. I mean, what would I like them to do? <laughs> you know, something something sophisticated, something um elegant, something yeah. that can be dressed up really well, you know, like a modern Chanel kind of uh business suit kind of fragrance that hopefully has enough versatility that you can use it in casual settings, but is that what's going to happen? I don't know. All right. Fair play. Okay. Uh, all right. Moving on to George. Okay. So uh, I know that they have been working on a men's fragrance. Chanel have been, can you hear it here first? Chanel are working on a men's fragrance. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Come on. Yo, give it up for Chanel. Let's go. They are. They are. <laughs> Um, they have been working on it for two to three years. That's two to three years long overdue. Yeah, um, but here's the thing. They are waiting for their moment. They are still terrified of Creed. All the designers are. <laughs> Apart from Aqua de Palma, who are absolutely overconfident and feel as though they're going to be the next Creed. Yeah! I love ADP. Oh, Aqua de Palma! <laughs> no, Aqua de Palma, they release all this stuff and they're like, yeah, we're going to get an event as soon. We're going to get an event as soon. They're freaking delusional, but they, they do try. Yes. They Yo, do Colonia try. Pura is them. nice, though. <laughs> Colonia Pura is like whatever, but um, <laughs> they, they're, they're going for it. They're going for it. They're absolute workhorses. They want to be noticed. Um, they ain't going to do it with that packaging. They aren't, no, they aren't. They, they'll never yeah. learn, but good for them. They're, they're a workhorse. Um, 
The only other kind of thing that I've got to say is, um, you know, like I, like I said, um, you know, the the it's just it's just very difficult for the, des for the designers, and um, unless you're Christian Dior or you're Chanel, you haven't really got a hope hope in hell at the moment, um, r really. But if Chanel promotes it right, they've promoted Gabriel very well. It's got a story and all that kind of stuff. And if they did that with a men's fragrance, I think that if Chanel made a successful men's designer fragrance, that would boost the confidence for all the other companies. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So there we go. Yeah, it, it kind of like starts and dies with Chanel to a certain extent. Um, anyway, yeah. moving and on. Well, uh, that's why they're not releasing it, because they, they know the pressure and they know the responsibility they have. Yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. Peter Parker, first and all. Uh, X-Men, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, you guys have covered a lot of points that I was going to say. I mean, with the success of Gabriel, uh, an original release sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. And, um, I mean, selfishly, I want, like, Anteus Sport, but that's just me. <laughs> um, but really, yeah, I do think they need to deviate slightly. Uh, definitely <laughs> not due to Guilty Absolute mm -hmm. deviation. Uh, because, like I mentioned before, they deviated with Egoist, and it was a bomb. Mm -hmm. And then they made yeah. Platinum Egoist, and it was more accessible, and it was successful, and still is. So yeah. I think that, um, I mean, the big sellers, obviously your, your Lorem Sport, your Blue de Chanel's, they're pretty safe, you know, fresh fragrances. I do want to see something, again, that's more so along the lines of maybe a Lorem or, or Monsieur, but more updated and they can have this whole ad campaign of like the sophisticated man you know the the gentleman whatever like but um but definitely yeah i mean something more a little more mature but uh for the 2018 crowd so i don't know i oh, yeah. i don't always, have the answer but i've always wanted rouge de chanel with a gourmand rhubarb now <laughs> Mm, Here's like the thing: if Chanel does, does, if Chanel does um, rhubarb, I feel like it'll be like I don't know rhubarb ecolart, you know, Hermes, something like that. It would be super safe. Mm -hmm. I just and, want like, rouge de don't. Chanel. Then. Rouge de Chanel, awesome. Rouge, rouge, rouge de Chanel. Let's let's yeah. let's do that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll be about the rouge. Let's, too. let's bring them up. <laughs> and like, let's hope it's not as like I don't know, dated as like previous rouges. Like I don't know, Habi Rouge by Guerlain, something like that. We'll see. Uh, anyway, Tim, your favorite brand of all time, Chanel. How do you feel? What they should do, and what we want them to do? When I was, when I think of this topic, like it reminds me of my time in New York City. Steve, remember that video we did called the Fragrance Wash? We kind of touched on this kind of yeah. general idea. What we hmm, want. I them wonder to do who fed you that video idea. Yeah, like I don't know, everyone knows, but um. <laughs> Like it'd be it'd be fun to go back and watch this tonight to see if any of that those things actually happen throughout the year or oh, not. Yeah. Yeah. See if we made any correct guesses. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do that for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of right now, I think I think I said this like one of us said this in that same video as well that we need an original Chanel boy guy men release. I think everyone's yes. on the same boat with that. Um, yeah. for women, I don't know. For women, I really don't, I, I, I don't dabble in women market so like too much. But one thing I will touch on is that the women's market is always it's, it's so boring to me. It's vanilla a lot of fragrance smells the same. Yeah, vanilla everything. Or white like uh, you know, <laughs> white for Elang sandalwood, Elang sandalwood here, Elang sandalwood there. Like it's it's you know either it's just a sweet bomb. It's funny you it say that, grows. but the guys market is even worse with how everything's moment, just fresh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I no, mean, like, but the female you. fragrance has kind of always Burn been that. Burn it's Burn been Burn that. <laughs> I get that. It's been that way. Like, for, for guys, at least there's interesting release here and there. But with women's fragrances, like, I haven't heard any, like, wow release in a long time. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to touch on the women's. I really don't know. But uh, mm -hmm. the men's definitely a new original <laughs> release from Chanel. Uh, you know, don't neuter Olivier Polch, please. Oh, they have. Like, we need them. Even so, that. like, give him full reign. That's what I want from Chanel. And that, yeah. I think that's all I need to say because you guys touch on all the points already. Okay, fair play. And I really haven't touched on it that much myself because I kind of defer to you guys. But as far as what I can envision from Chanel personally, um, I think Gabrielle is, like, just really bad personally. Um, it's just if they're trying to push that yeah. stuff for the masses with the ad campaign, the great ad campaign featuring Kristen Stewart, I get that. It's just 
that it just smells like something from years back. Like, I don't think I can ever see white florals ever being standardized in young women's like areas like this, like, you know, post-secondary education or as um, young urban professionals. I just can't see that scent as being you, the scent. You mean elementary school kids can't wear tuberos? No. <laughs> I said post-secondary. <laughs> but but um, real talk, it's just like, I, like, it's just, I think they missed the boat so hard with Gabrielle. And I, they better be thankful that their advertising is on point. Yeah. Because I think scent they've got wise, nothing else. They've got nothing else. No, I get that they got nothing else. And I understand that. It's just, I'm just saying that they have to do something else. I know they have nothing else. It's just, ultimately, I just don't see this as being this shit. I think it's going to be the best selling fragrance at Sephora for a minute. But like next year, I, I, I ultimately seeing, I don't, like, I think. Like Coco Mademoiselle will supersede it again and stuff like that. But as far mm -hmm. as men's goes, um, yes, they have nothing else. I like. I think yeah. the next fragrance is going to be fresh, without a doubt. I don't see why not. Um, Very Chanel, extract the puffer. Is, well, you know what I'd love to see. You know, <laughs> and I think this would be a troll move versus people like Lacoste. I want to see Vera de Chanel, Jaune de Chanel, Rouge de Chanel. Like that would be so sick. I'd be hype, and I can imagine all those bottles. They'd be shaped like oh. Blood of Chanel, but they'd be in those colors. Yeah, colors, yeah. That'd be so gangster. You're no, pulling uh, costs. And, and, and exactly. they're all yeah. they're all clones of a Zaro Chrome. Hey, uh, shout out to the. I would actually like that. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Anyway, too much Chanel talk for my liking. So we're gonna go on to everyone's favorite house. Christian Dior. So we're going to start off with the guest of honor. I know he has a couple's uh, sense that he can add in. I'm sure we all do. Let's keep this to a minimum, boys. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying this in the stream. Thank you to all the stream monsters again for tuning in. But uh, how do you feel about what Dior should do, Stephen? Or what would you like to see from them in 2018? Wow. Um, man. It I is loaded. Given it, yeah, I mean, certainly. Um, I haven't really given it... Too much thought. I mean, probably my sentiments for Chanel could overlap a little bit here with Dior, but um, you know, Dior, it it probably is my favorite designer house. You know, I know we kind of jested at that earlier, but it really is my favorite designer house. And uh, I think if I um, I want to see them just keeping up the uh, the variety. You know, I think we have the leathery um, violet heavy Fahrenheit, and then we have the sweet sort of Diorum. Uh, intense and we have the iris and we have all these various elements so I just want to see them do something that's even you know different from what they've released so far um, and I don't know I have a lot of faith in Dior and I think they're gonna I think they're gonna come through and I'm sure they're always working on something but uh, yeah yeah okay fair play yeah all right too fresh yeah so you guys know I'm a big fan of Dior again they're probably my favorite designer house they got like all the Dior online right here Got some uh, Fahrenheit and all that kind of stuff, and like actually just in fresh off reviewing uh, Fahrenheit Le Parfum, and in that review, I was just like, I love Dior because of the progression of their scents. Um, you know how like when you spray it on, it's most of them will smell pretty different uh, towards the dry down than in the opening. I think it's great work, um, but yeah, Dior has been a little bit off the tracks for me recently. I mean, of course, we have Sauvage. Um, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of it. I do own it, yes, but um, I own it purely off of the hype when I first got it pretty much. And like, I think it's time to sort of revamp their fragrance line a little bit. Just like Steven was saying, I want to see them kind of keep up their uniqueness variety. Um, I want to kind of go back to the Dior of, you know, five or 10 years ago where they would put out stuff like Dior Homme, you know, that would completely go against the grain of what the fragrance industry is doing at the time. You know, even when the original Fahrenheit came out, like I want to see that groundbreaking game changing stuff from Dior again. Um, I'm going to, I mean, I'm pretty sure what they're going to release uh, Eau de Parfum Flanker Sauvage. Is that official? Do we know about that yet? Yeah, I believe uh, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Official. Dark times in the, in the dark, dark times for Dior guys. I don't know. <laughs> I want to see them just go back to what they used to be. Maybe I'm nostalgic about that, but it's like, I want to see them, you know, go back to what they used to be. If that Fair makes play. sense. So, All right. Know. It does make sense. Okay. Ash, Should how do you feel about Dior? You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pretty much echo both Stephen and Bradley's thoughts. Dior is also a um, designer house, especially if you factor in their niche offerings. 
which you don't consider niche offerings. But um, they're I think they're that, different. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm intrigued by the Oda Parfum release of Sauvage, which I'm sure most everybody is, just to see what changes. Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah, George is pumped. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I think that with the Dior Ohm line, they've almost put out everything that they could put out. Yeah. You know, working with Iris the way they have. And then Fahrenheit, um, Le Parfum is great, and Fahrenheit Absolute was dope, and they canceled that, unfortunately, discontinued it. But I think I would like them to come out with an entire new line, like start a new line, mm -hmm. instead of just doing like a whole crap load of Sauvage flankers at this point. Okay. Rome, they've already hit Fahrenheit, you know, so it's kind of like Sauvage is next in line. Wow. Um, so right. if they okay. come up with an entire new release, I'm not sure exactly what it would be, but I have faith. All right. No, no, um... It's the one house I feel like or brand that people would have faith in as far as the fragrance division, as far as these mainstream luxury goods brands, because I know there's a lot of ardent Dior boys out there with a Z. <laughs> with you the know, Z. In the fragrance community. So we got it uh, with a Z always. Anyway, speaking of Dior, um, the oh. renowned Dior video of uh, two and a half years ago from Mr. Uh, George Atkinson, aka the Fragrance Apprentice, how do you feel about Dior as of 2018? I, I just want them to release a Dior Sauvage Eau Fraiche so I can have a solidified reason to actually end my life. Mm. <laughs> yes. um, no we need you. Um, Yo, you'll yeah. be a martyr. You'll be a martyr. <laughs> Hashtag martyr. Easy. Hashtag yeah, martyr boy is martyr boy. No, wait for us. <laughs> martyr boy. The, the Sauvage low. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, Savage so Summer Edition. Savage so Summer Edition. <laughs> 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 oh. I'll spray it and then leap off the tallest building I can find. Um, yeah, I was was doing a very very uh, Wes Anderson style video of it happening. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. no, I, I I think that they should like the they don't understand how good they are at. Um, gourmands, if they if they put their back into it, yeah. why don't they do a gourmand line? And I've they're the, thought, and yeah, they're the, they have the most malleable um, image out of every brand that I'm about to list. I feel as far as the designer level, because of the fact that they have so many identities. You have Dior Om for your metrosexual. You have Eau Sauvage for your old school gentleman. You have uh, Fahrenheit for like dudes who came up in the 80s, 90s. You have Dior, uh, uh, what's it called? You have Savage now for your um, contemporary, you know, young urban yeah. professional or safe person. Yes. Like you can go in they any. Can wear many hats. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. Yeah. So Gourmand makes a lot of sense. I know a couple of y'all have mentioned that, but I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be legit. I swear to God, if there is a Savage Oud, I will, <laughs> I will, I will drive to Paris. Disgusting. I will go to Paris and I will just slap all of them. All of them. <laughs> all <laughs> of them. I will. I love it. I love. I love it. Gotta yeah, please, love please in the comments list the worst Savage flankers you could ever think of. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know? Let's get creative here. Come on. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you like? Um, I think it's funny because like, uh, you know, obviously, like if you just switch one letter, you have like sausage. So savage sausage. I, I keep seeing savage that like on uh, like yes. various like, um, you know, subways and like people will just put an S there just for for kicks. I'm like, what if that shit was a natural flanker? Somebody actually <laughs> came up to me in the store and said, "Excuse me, sir, do you have the uh, the the Christian Dior Savage fragrance?" And I went, "Oh savage. yeah, oh yes, the Chris <laughs> Designer, Chris Designer, hey, oh uh, yes, the Christian Dior fragrance that was rejected by uh, Jake Paul for being <laughs> in, in the top ten because he considered it to be too savage." Yo, yeah, team ten fragrance. boys, team ten, <laughs> yes, team ten. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> imagine that. Just saying. Always yeah. savage. Always savage. And always every day, bro. Savage, pure savage. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Uh, X-Men, <laughs> how do you feel about uh, the, the Dior uh, potential in 2018? I think Dior is doing exactly what they should. I have complete faith in them. Uh, they're just following suit. 
because um, it's, not, it's not so much about flankers. It's more so about the Parfum version, right? So Dior Homme, Dior Homme Parfum, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Parfum, Eau Sauvage, Standard. Eau Sauvage DDP. And, uh, and it's been nice because their Parfum versions are actually quite different, which I like. True. So they're, they're, they're a big deviation. While Chanel's Eau de Parfum of, um, of Bleu de Chanel was oh, it's a subtle, subtle change. You know, I, yeah. I do prefer one, one over the other, but no, but Dior, like, it's, I, I really like, you know, what they do with their flankers, and I think it may, the Sauvage EDP, uh, it may make it, you know, really interesting for us frag heads, because it'll add more depth, it'll be less generic, and, you know, who knows what they can come up with, so I don't think it's quite time yet for uh, a new release, just because Sauvage is very new, so, I mean, you can't expect them to just pump out stuff every year. Although that'd be nice, um, so I, I still think there's some there's some legs to the Sauvage line, and uh, and I'm looking forward to it honestly. So, all right, yeah. sounds good. And uh, Mister Everyday Bro, how do you feel mm-hmm. with his well, Asian hair flow? Thank God, S- Asian hair flow. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> he had to. And then Brad's like shaking his head. Whoops. All right, Tim, how do you feel? Dab on them haters. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I'll let Manny do the dabbing around here. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. I'm not in this discussion. Dior, Dior, I feel like 2018 is going to be a big year for Dior. And it's because there's have, they have so many lined up to be released. And um, I know Steven, we're both excited for this. There's going to be like seven new Dior Privés. <laughs> so, yeah. And also yeah. um, Savage EDP. People are going to be waiting for that because Savage is such a big hit to see if Dior can like keep up the Savage name to see if they can still make money off it. Mm-hmm. And, or, is, or is it going to be a flop and like, you know, make ways for other brands to try and take the spot? Um, we'll see if, if Dior can stay like the king of designers because Savage is, is right now the king of designer fragrances uh, without, mm-hmm. without, any, yeah. without a doubt. So it'll be interesting to see if um, they can keep the spot. I think to keep, to, in order to like try to stay on top, they're going to, your uh, Savage EDP has to be something that is, like remarkable, like re- remarkably like mass appealing, as the the original one was, and the re the revamp of the Dior Privé line is going to be something that um I'm super interested in as well to see which one they end up killing discontinued because yeah, there's no yeah, way every know. store yeah the, the, the Grand V is gone yeah, like that's yeah, the only yeah, one I know yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, we we had um a discussion weeks back and I can't recall if you were here George or not in which uh, we had this predictions about which ones would be discontinued or not. Um, and uh, we presumed it based on, uh, I think we kind of organized the the Christian Dior La Collection Privé section of the e-store uh, in bestsellers and just presumed that the bottom ones were like not going to come back. You know, the Grand I swear, ones. if, if Fabulous Shoes is going, I quit. Well, no, they're never going re- to get rid of Fabulous Shoes. The stuff that sells. It's okay, it. guys. They got Gourmand's Kiss. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's that. There's one fragrance that I, I, sh- that I do have to show, and this is just for Steven because uh, okay. gotta make him a little jelly. Is everyone else watching here. Oh. Sakura, I got a new song. <laughs> Sakura, Sakura, that's awesome. That's a good song in Dance Dance Revolution. I've tr- I, like, combo, if, I, combo. if I can say something right now about the new yeah. um, Dior's, I've not tried all seven of them. But I have tried two of them so far, and it's courtesy of um, Oswald, Mr. Oz. He sent me a sample of Terra, Terra Bella, which is the other one I've tried. But th- they're both safe. They're both very, very safe fragrances. And I don't know if that's going to be the trend for the, the rest the other five that I have not smelled yet. But right now, like I don't know if I'm way too excited for it, but we'll see. I know the other five could be different, but right now they're just very, very safe fragrances. Yeah. Niche, niche, um, niche, yeah, niche style safe. Like something like Byredo. Yeah. would do which i know manny's very happy about mm-hmm. right you know, he loves and just a, a quick quick shout out to mr oz quick shout out to yeah. mr oz boss yeah, you know. quick shout out to what a beauty man, uh who also, i think like, you guys um need any like uh exclusive dior previous that's not released yet yes the plug did you just <laughs> his government spam yeah wow. he has the plug you know, the illuminati 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 confirmed oswald yeah Big year for Dior because they have to stay king of the mountain. We'll see how they keep it. I, I, I have faith. I don't have anything to give them in terms of advice at all. I'm just interested to see what they come up with. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Fair play. Now, I'm actually one person who would disagree as far as Dior being king of the mountain. They're definitely not, especially when they have a 20-year-old fragrance still outselling them in Aqua de Jo. So did, you can come up with all these lines and stuff, and ultimately, they're not selling as much on the designer level. So that I, like, to me, they're just not king in that regard. Um, on top of that, they have all of these lines that they're citrusifying, if anything. Like um, bring back Dior um, Spore to no iris, um, making a new version of uh, Eau Sauvage Parfum, for example. Uh, you have this m more pushing down citrus and umbrox in, in expanding the Sauvage line. And uh, the Fahrenheit line, you know, it is it's it is what it is. It's not really going to do anything. It's, it's, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, is the reformulation of these fragrances has to do with like the current, like, um, you know, ingredients thing that you're talking about. No, could no, that, could that I, be I, that I, why? Yeah, it probably is, but mm -hmm. it, um, as a result, I don't expect much from them, you know, uh, other than the safe stuff that you told me about in the La Collection Privé that they're debuting. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense to me because a lot of this stuff that's that you told me what's in Terabella and um, Sakura, like, is safe stuff that you know I'm gonna like, but as far as traditional Dior fans that want something deeper or resinous or uh, more experimental, they're not gonna get that. I think that yeah, I think those days like are pastel done. color. Exactly, it's it's over. Like Dior is done when it comes to that. It's like and um, where I think they do have hope is women's fragrances, um, if anything, mainly because, uh, like I feel like all of their lines have like in in the women's like I think they're for the most part, pretty cool, or have done something really interesting. Like, mm -hmm. I feel I feel like Poison's fairly iconic, J'adore. I do mm -hmm. like Dior Addict, um, although that kind of gets underplayed. Uh, but I think that the Dior women's lines can actually benefit from something more than the men's right now. Uh, because Savage, despite it being played out when it did come out, and it's still played out, is still doing fairly well, you know? So I'm not, I'm not sure if Dior needs to do that much. Do, what do you guys think? Do you think uh, houses like Dior and Chanel would do mass market designer unisex releases? I don't believe so. Because at the end of the day, how do you sell that? Mainly because there are different types of uh, luxury goods department stores. So, for example, if you go to like Nordstrom and stuff, it's very they, – they have essays there that have no problem dealing in like the unisex approach, for example. But like um, Chanel Dior are typically the cornerstones uh, – of the type of department stores that you'd find at, you know, like like the Macy's, uh, like um, here in Canada, the Bay, for example. And there's nothing there that's unisex, you know, or has a unisex for section for now. Yeah. If you know, any with, brand is going, our society do it, is like is is going though. With you know, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but <laughs> I think <laughs> what will happen. Fluidity, no, and and I'm binary. And I get that, uh, and I, I feel like I'm a major proponent of that on my channel. Yeah. But I feel like what's going to get there to that point, I think it's going to be hopefully the um, the mainstreaming of niche fragrances, I hope, is what's going to get us there. Rather than uh, I don't want to see the designers do this, to be honest. like I'd love to see the creative um, approach of uh, the actual trendsetters, um, niche and indie, get there before these designers do. Mm -hmm. and capitalize off of that so that's why i love seeing so many mainstream you know niche brands coming up in nordstrom coming up in Saks and whatnot and uh so happen to hear them outselling a lot of um a lot of designers is crazy like for example if you go to sephora like usa right now tom ford's exclusive line is outselling their like signature line like tenfold it's not even close you know what i'm saying so uh, but that's not, but like that's just that's just Tom Ford. You take a look at the top 10 in men's or women's. I'm pretty sure Joe Malone has at least two fragrances in, in each of their section that are a top 10 for, for men or women. So, like, I, I want to see it head in that direction. I just don't think it's gonna, I just don't want it to be this designer, and I don't think it's gonna be designers who are gonna do that. If that makes any sense. Anyone else on that top? I think okay. we lost Bradley. Yeah, no, he'll be back. He'll be back. Bradley. Uh, it's just his camera. I think it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that being said, um, you know, I, I always thought about that too. So it's cool how James brought that up, mainly because um, I'm 
I, 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 it's almost like I look for androgynous fragrances myself, so that's why I'm pretty passionate about that topic. Uh, that being said, we do have other houses to get to. <laughs> if you guys need to take a break or anything, feel free. How, how to get Manny me. excited for a fragrance? It's, it, it leans feminine. But what? Yes. what? <laughs> uh, you know what's a messed up part? is like you're not wrong. Hey, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I know I'm yeah. not wrong. <laughs> Hey, what's up? What's up? D despite how I'm dressed. Okay. Anyway, uh, Tom Ford, do you guys have any predictions for Tom Ford 2018 or what you think they should do ow, 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 ow. as far as like, oh, let's man. keep it. Um, yeah, let's just try to keep it a uh, signature <laughs> line. Uh, Steven, how do you feel about Tom Ford fragrances? Uh, what signature, they did this year and, um, and next year. Okay. Well, yeah, take a look at the most recent release, right? which was <laughs> not effing fabulous, but on the designer realm, you had uh, Tom Ford's Noir Anthracite. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to have been received with very mixed reactions. So yeah. I don't know if he is going to take a lot of the criticism into consideration. Um, it seems that there are a lot of people out there who absolutely love it. Um, and yes, it was a little bit more on the daring side. And you have the Nargamoda in there, which kind of makes it smoky and culinary and whatnot. But I think for a lot of people, um, they're not buying into it. And uh, a lot of people who shop on the designer realm just want something that's versatile, that you know will ap appeal to the masses. And uh, I, think, um, I think they're gonna keep up with that trend. And I think they're gonna do something provocative like they did in the niche realm, but now on the designer realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All righty. All right, moving on to Fresh. Are, are we just talking about the designer line or the private blend too, or just uh, everything? I mean, however you feel. <laughs> uh, first of all, first of all, lower than prices. You know, mm -hmm. you can't be charging that much for those private blends. They're not worth that much, in my opinion. For like most of them, with the, with an exception of a one or two, but I wouldn't Shot pay fire. retail hardly ever for those. Um, so let's get that out of the way right now. Second of all, with their designer line, you know they're designer line, I guess you want to, I think we just need more releases again, sort of similar to Chanel, more original releases. I don't think he's putting out necessarily as much, um, just to keep, uh, you know, us fragrance enthusiasts kind of engaged in the house. To, and I've kind of lost track of Tom Ford. you know, when they do put out stuff, I do generally tend to like it. Um, but it's just, they don't, they're not putting it out as much, you know, and like, I wouldn't be that hurt if they just discontinued the entire lower bracket of the, designer sense you know no more tom ford noir extreme no more great vetiver or any of that like i wouldn't be that hurt by it that much to be honest um so I really i think that they're more successful with their private blends but maybe that could just be me but tom ford just start putting out more stuff and lower your prices more quantity but and the same quality but lower prices i know that's a big ask but that's what i want hopefully i can see like bradley right now like with a torch going to tom ford's house <laughs> You're my boy. Lower boo. damn prices. Lower <laughs> damn prices. Start a riot. <laughs> the rent is yeah. too damn high. I'm playing. Fragrances <laughs> <laughs> or pay rent. <laughs> That's Tough the choice. Me. The next video. Ah <laughs> oh, man. I'd be the best spelling homeless person ever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That that that's what's up. Okay, Ashton, your thoughts on Tom Ford's uh, the state of Tom Ford. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> the I'm going to talk really briefly about the private lane line. Um, back in the day, uh, a lot of their releases are more... Oh, I got it. That was a terrible way to start. A lot of their older releases are looked upon in a much better light than their newer stuff, right? So yeah. their, their newer stuff that comes out, everybody's like, oh, this is either a riff on one of their older ones that performs worse, so who cares, or it's uh, just crap, right? Yeah. Um, and then Effing Fabulous came out, and I have yet to smell it, but it's got mixed reviews. So, um, and personally, I'm not going to spend the amount of money that it would take to buy Effing Fabulous. Um, so I don't know when I will smell that. If I can ever find it for a good price, I'll smell it. But um, the Private Blend line, it seems like most of their, their fragrances that I hold in a higher esteem are their darker ones. Um, they've got... You know, Costa Zero, Mandarino Di Malfi, Neroli Portofino, et cetera, et cetera. But their performance kind of sucks on most of those. So the price doesn't really warrant what you're getting. Mm -hmm. um, Costa Zero, personally, is my favorite. So <sighs> when they come out with, like, an aquatic release, I don't get pumped. Because I'm always like, I'm just going to get let down. It's not going to be worth the price. But I'd like to see 
riffs on some of the darker notes maybe that they haven't featured as prominently, um, if that would be possible. And then on their their signature line, Tom Ford uh, Man Extreme, or whatever, is actually a really great fragrance. Uh, performance maybe not so great, but um, maybe if they continue on that line, uh, a new flanker on that would be well received. It it's interesting great. that they're yeah, they're going more uh, on the Noir fragrances, and personally, I prefer the Tom Ford Man releases than I do the Noir releases. Sure. So maybe maybe okay. one of those, you know? Or an entire new line. Um, noir, I don't like the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum all that much, personally. Mm -hmm. haven't smelled Anthracite yet. Okay, fair play. Yeah. All right, uh, George, Tom Ford. Yeah, I think he's all right. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I don't know. I, I've talked about this before. Like, I, I just feel as though Estee Lauder don't know what they're doing, and they just think, "All right, well, we'll just release a load of weird stuff and see if it sticks." I you know, um, completely agree with that. You know, I, I feel as though there is a very unnecessary. I feel as though a lot of their fragrance releases are affectations. They're not. They're, they're just to see. Oh well, this is weird. What do you think? Um, I think they need to focus. I think that they are in a very privileged position um, where they do have a good budget and they do have a consolidated backing with Estee Lauder, but they need an actual focus of where they're going and what they're going to do as a company rather than, we're Tom Ford, we're weird, aren't we so strange, look at us. That's so you wouldn't thoughts. be down with like a new um, fucking fabulous Frank Flanker called Brilliantly Bitchy? I didn't think fabulous. <laughs> uh, Pretentiously prick. Pretentiously prick. <laughs> or they can come uh, out with an eau de toilette version. Eau de toilette version would be called uh, not so effing fabulous. Or freaking fabulous. Not How about that? Freaking, freaking fabulous. Yeah. Freaking. Moderately fabulous. Yes. Freaking um, great. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Fudgingly fun. Thank <laughs> you. I like that. That would yeah. be an eau de cologne. <laughs> uh, hashtag oh, Tom Ford for kids. There you go. Oh god, oh god. Creed for kids versus Tom, Tom Ford for kids. Battle. Tom Ford for kids has like notes of civet and stuff like Tom that. Ford for and it's got some kid in like Ford boxers Ford. and nothing else and he's like standing next to a lake or something and it's all black and white. Tom Ford for kids. Don't give him any ideas. Yeah, Tom Ford will actually young. do this stuff. Yeah, yeah, and whilst they're young, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you might have. You guys might have given him a movie idea. To be honest, yeah, uh, yeah just at the very top. Copyright this right now. Because there's Tom Ford, and then there's you know uh, the Tom Ford, you know, beauty and fragrance division, as we know the uh, Estee Lauder. And I'd like to think that you know Tom Ford is crafty, but I don't want to give him too much credit for being crafty because he might take that to heart with this uh, that we might have just fed him. Hashtag Tom Ford, if you're watching, call us. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to star in your next movie. That'd be cool. Yeah, Team Top <laughs> Five and uh, Red Lessons in the next in Nocturnal Animals Part Two. Yeah, and, and Tom yeah, Ford. Yeah, shoot me in the movie. Too, whatever. <laughs> Tom Ford, you're good. You're almost as good a filmmaker as I am. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, oh, oh With that being said, the master X Men. X Men. How do you feel about Tom Ford? Guys, isn't it funny how we spent the last like hour and a half knocking companies for being too generic, and now Tom Ford comes along and we're saying they're too creative, <laughs> True. They're too unique, all right, all right, all right. they're too different. All right, fair point. They're yeah. aquatic, aquatic. So, hashtag bars. No, but, okay, so I think yeah, yeah. Tom Ford. Um, I commend Tom Ford personally for their creativity. I will say yes, they do need a bit of direction because. Um, I have smelled fucking fabulous and noir anthracite, and I really think they should have been swapped. <laughs> like, like fabulous is more designer, noir anth uh, anthracite I, is more I'll second that creative, <laughs> weird. Maybe they got mixed up. It should have been a no, no. yeah. Maybe they got mixed up in the bottle. <laughs> Wrong bottle. <laughs> Little so, so yeah, I do. I do appreciate the the fact that they are you know striving for creativity, and uh, yeah, if if there's flops, Tom Ford. Does he care? I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's part of the the brand. He's he's just pure avant garde. Um, that being said, I do think that although I love Black Orchid, I love Grey Vetiver, I love you know Tom Ford Man Extreme, and or Extreme, I just kind of feel like from you know a, a storefront perspective, they're always kind of in the background in like some weird little like box. 
and then the private blend is always prominently featured. So it just it just seems like it's they're always kind of an afterthought. And like Bradley said, I could I could see them just completely veering away from that line altogether because their prices aren't very designer at all, right? No, our extreme no. is you know getting close to two hundred bucks. <laughs> I mean, for hundred mil. So I don't know if it's necessary because I mean I don't know, but. Uh, but yeah, Norx Dream's pretty cool. So the thing that will constantly save it is Black Orchid. Black Orchid is a huge seller. That's, so that that's keeping that whole line alive, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably yeah, when it needs to die. Well. Yeah, Grave Ever is good. It's it's good, but it's I mean, is it is it revolutionary? No. Oh. There's tons of there's tons of clean Vaniverus out there. We so, lost. Yes, it was better. Yeah. Sidiver. Yeah. Sidiver. All righty. My boy Woody. Rasasi Woody. Oh, uh, yo. And it's funny because when, when you showed me the Rasasi Woody bottle, I was like, yo, this feels like quality. <laughs> hey, it smells like quality too. It's yeah, I know. It's, it's legit. It's actually Shout great. out to Babs Collection. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> in a minute, man. Yo, Nobody you know, has. How, how, to, how to make Rasasi. What's up? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Anyway, um, who are we on now? Tim? Timmy. Tim. Uh, Tim Ford. So, so <laughs> I, Tim, I, Ford. I, Tim Ford. So, guys, <laughs> next fragrance. What note haven't we used yet? Let's see. I mean, Savette has not really been used all that much. I Which wonder why. To make that popular. <laughs> Somehow. Bring it back. <laughs> Popcorn. Bring- we bring it back. Oh, oh, Tom Ford needs to make a barbershop fragrance, like a really barbershoppy <laughs> fragrance Ooh. in his private blend. A bo- oh, 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 oh. Yes, no. but it would be it'd be like a, the barbershop of Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, I was just going to say that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> dark, dark dark that. He would be like, I've envisioned this barbershop as noir, a dark barbershop. Uh, Tom Ford. Noir barbershop. Bar- <laughs> no, no, guys, I have it. Noir bar bar. There you, you go. Oh. Boy. Oh. <laughs> it's going to come out next year, and we're going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> he listened. That would be so lit. Uh, it's Gallagher all over again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> so for me, I, like, I agree with um, what Bradley said uh, and James echoed that. Like, the, the, he's, I don't think the brand is focused on a signature line at all. Great. I feel like they're just like, let's yeah. release something in a signature line so it, like, it looks like we're doing something. Uh, it was an anthracite. And, um, yeah. and then, like, you know, let's focus on he- more heavy on the private blends. I think, I think uh, they, might know, they might be catching on to the trend that, you know, designer fragrance are dying, and they're trying to capitalize on, like, their niche game Tom, right Tom now. I think, and I, I, yeah, and I think that with the release of Fucking Fabulous, that was intentional that they released it two days after Viking. Yeah. yeah, like no, it, it, it literally. Ha- it, it, yeah, it crushed. It, it it literally crushed the Viking hype like outright. Like a lot, a lot of people were talking about Viking after like fucking fabulous was released. It was all about fucking fabulous, and that, I think that was I, I believe that was very very intentional of them yeah, just because, to you know, you know steal steal every, the niche eyes. Sorry, sorry, Tim. Um, Fabulous terrified a craig, you know. You know yeah. Interrupting. But yeah, I don't think they're going to focus on the signature line anytime soon. I think they're just going to keep capitalizing on private blends, which I think is fine because we're getting, we're heading into that trend where like, you know, like James said, you know, more unisex fragrance and their niche line is marketed unisex. Yeah. So okay. I like that. I like that. I like that style a lot. And plus, I don't really care about a lot of fragrances in the signature line anyway. Yes. Maybe besides Grey Vetiver, but still, it's not a must-buy. It's not a must-have for me. I don't think um, there's any men offering in the Tom Ford signature line. That, that, to me, is like, man, there's nothing like it. I must have it. Something like, Maybe besides Black Orchid. But other than that, I don't, I don't see it. So, yeah, keep with the private blend line. And um, I think next year I heard like, some rumor that they're going to be releasing like three new leather fragrances. But, so I'm excited for that. For yeah, Tom Ford. Starts- so here's the thing. Um, as far as Tom Ford, uh, they are effectively, I believe, like the Atelier Dorian collection is gone. Like uh, Shanghai Lily is getting discontinued, uh, no. as well as Reeve d'Ambre, and then uh, Costa Azura from the Noir Portofino collection. Reeve d'Ambre can go. As as well as um, Tom Ford Man Extreme is going too. 
Um, so Please. it's funny. It's just the stuff that doesn't sell is just going to be bodied completely. <laughs> so, uh, no, basically, no. Tom Ford doesn't have much direction. They're just kind of like trying to cover uh, uh, what we haven't covered enough of yet or what you think we will sell. And um, from what I heard, too, uh, two offerings from the Vera series, which only came out a year and a half ago, are actually going to be axed by the end of 2018 as well. Mm. So literally, um, I, I want them to kind of have this like middle ground as as far as <clears throat> let's still like don't stop being Tom Ford. Like let's keep it trying to innovate, but like let's innovate with some direction now, especially when you have an idea of what you have and haven't covered yet better now. You tried going back to the green stuff. You already discontinued the Stallion Cypress. The green stuff isn't working out for you with the Ver line. Um, maybe don't do that now. Let's let's try. I, I I doubt they've covered absolutely everything. Like I I think there are certain notes note, notes that they could do. Um, I know. Um, I mean T. Hey, yeah, that, that's one yeah. you can do. Um, I was going to say as far as citrus, because, you know, I feel like it's going to be citrusy for a while, especially with how Tom Ford is also um, limited as far as what they can innovate with or not. Uh, I like I think this would be fun. I think they should do a Yuzu fragrance. We don't see enough representation. I was thinking the same note. I was like, Yuzu would be interesting. Because Yuzu, you don't see a lot. Um, you don't see a lot of Yuzu outside of Asian yeah. mainstream designers, so Issei Miyake and uh, Shiseido. So um, you saw it in Victus Aqua, but what happened to that shit? Like it was just limited, right? So maybe um, more Yuzu in the designer game by way of Tom Ford. I'd be up for it. From what and I've heard, uh, very quickly, just to finish the sort of that that point, I hear that they're going to be putting a lot of stock into the noir line and there's going to be a ton of noir flankers uh, because noir extreme was an unexpected hit yeah noir is great you know i love noir but noir extreme did get the numbers up so that's the anthracite thing yeah. so noir there's just going to be billions of noir flankers it's probably mm. going to go like long yeah uh, my my, <laughs> my man uh, my friend uh it's sad back, to hear my friend, my friend back home here in uh southern ontario canada uh my friend b-man he actually <laughs> He actually picked up Noir, like absolutely fell in love with it. And uh, he ended up buying Noir right. Extreme as well. So um, yeah, I can definitely see it as an unexpected hit. It's they're just crowd pleasing fragrances minus anthracite. So yeah, uh, I don't see why they shouldn't yeah. give um, the Noir line stock. Like it, it will be their own mine, if anything. So um, I'm all about that. Yeah, they can, they can do a few more flankers. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah, flanker life, what's up? Um, they're even doing flankers to the Noir Portofino collection. Yeah. So and then the the intense ones for tobacco oud and oud wood. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, speaking of flankers, the last house we are going to take an in depth look at for 2018 is um the, the Mr. Flanker, Yves Saint Laurent. Yeah. Oh, so uh, you know oh, the, everyone's favorite lost cause in uh, modern day perfumery. <laughs> uh, how do you guys player, feel? Player. I'm not being player hater. Like why? I'm just playing. Ass. <laughs> Fair play. I but, have um, felt like. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Yo, Tim, on a scale of one to ten, how ass is why? <laughs> why? Why? Yeah, that's that's the that's the term here. Why? Why we leave? Oh, it? Ooh. <laughs> about to buy and give it a mad positive review. <laughs> Perfect <Hey>. name. <laughs> so hey, good. Um, oh my god. I think he's gonna hype it. <laughs> oh, it's over now. Everybody, hey, drop hey. what you're doing. Buy it right now. Buy it right now. Yeah. Got me, girls. <laughs> the first Made second quality. was sprayed. <laughs> 36 compliments as soon as I went outside. 16 <laughs> phone numbers. Six well, buy it now. 12,000 <laughs> views, only 12 comments. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, Stephen, how do you feel about Yves Saint Laurent uh, going into 2018? Uh, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, do I think they're going to release another flanker in the Loam or the La Nuit de Loam line? Yeah, I think they will. Um, I don't think they're done milking that yet. It's um, a meme right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a meme. <laughs> I love that picture that was posted online. I don't remember who posted it, but I think it was like um like a water bottle with like a La Nuit de Loam cap on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, listen, uh, not to suggest that they're watering anything down because I think that they did switch over to a, a different perfumer. I, I think it was a Greek female who did La Nuit de Lum O Electrique. So maybe they're dabbling with new perfumers for the more recent flankers. But I mean, 
you know, we, we just saw an original release and it wasn't to a lot of people's likings. And uh, it seems like, once again, they're following the trend. But I don't know. I, I really don't know where they're going to go from here. I, w I would like to ask for another original release, but um, I don't know. A Greek perfumer, that's your people, fam. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it might, might, be, might be Turkish, too, because oh. uh, we share a lot of uh, surnames just spelled yeah. a little differently. Yeah. You need to do the 23 and me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should. Dude, it's my jam. <laughs> I'm 2% Syrian, guys. Hey. I, I did one, uh, but I was almost entirely like uh, uh, UK. So I'm basic. Yes. UK. You will not, you know, listen, I don't want to go into a DNA uh, conversation, but I'm actually, um, I'm actually Native American Indian on my mother's side. Oh, yeah. I would not expect that. Wow. Actually, no yeah. joke. You can tell on my nose. That's the only giveaway. That's like uh, great. Don't great, you get like great. tax benefits? Uh, mate, when I get over there, <laughs> that's all I can get, mate. I'm I'm I'm, I'm one point two percent uh, Native American. Where's my check, please? <laughs> Yo, guys, guys, chill. SJWs, just saying. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Mate, I'm actually allowed to say that. That's actually true. I've got the paperwork. Oh yeah, he got. Yo, he has the governments. Yeah, respect. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Uh, speaking of uh, flankers, w which I believe he is smelling right now, uh, Too Fresh, how do you feel about uh, YSL? I lost all like grip on reality with Yves Saint Laurent. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I seriously, some days I'm like, I love them. You know, when I'm rocking Loam and it's smelling great or Loam Libre in the spring, I'm just like, you know, great house, great line. But then other days I'm just like, I smell Yves Saint Laurent Y and I'm brought back down to earth. And I come crashing down on the concrete and I smell that. <laughs> Back to earth. It's just like, what are they doing? They have, you know, they have such good fragrances, but then they just, some days you just wonder like, what, what are you even doing right now? But I do um, really, I don't know if you guys have tried anything from their like exclusive line. I cannot pronounce it. It starts with a V, I think. Um, La Bestiaire de Parfum. Yes, exactly. La Bestiaire, I, yeah. That's a good line, dude. Yeah. I really want to try stuff, but I want to see that line explode and become like the next your La Collection Privé because I think that from what I've heard, you know, they seem to be really, really good and the bottles look awesome as well. And I think if they can really work on that and sort of make that their big money maker, because of course these are making the money right now, but I don't really know what the future holds for them based on their current releases. Cause they're either doing flankers, which kind of suck or they're doing a, like original sense that also sucks. So it's a lose lose for them. Right. <laughs> I don't know. That also sucks. Everyone's favorite lost cause. All right. Uh, Ashton, how Pretty do you much. Feel? Yeah, so I haven't spelled why, so I can't comment. I know I heard just why? now Don't. that it sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. From them, I want to see more Lana Weed Alone flankers. I want to see <laughs> so many Lana Weed Alone flankers that should just give up and close my channel. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I don't know, man. Yves Saint Laurent's difficult because they have some yeah. old school fragrances that are classics. They've got Reeve Gosh, Jazz, Koros, um, M7. I know, I know. M7, M7 Fresh. They've got like this lineage where they have all these just heavy hitters that they've that since people will pay a huge doors. premium for. Yeah. And opium, opium too. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's just basic right now. Really boring. Um, Lana Weed Lomo Electric is it's okay. It's like uh, it'll get you compliments if that's what you want. It's easily worn, but it's not really original. Like I said, it, it riffs on Eros way too much, mm -hmm. and that's that's like the majority of what they're doing right now. Loam and Lana Weed Lomo flankers, right? Yeah. Which again, apparently sucks. Um, what would I like to see them do? Uh, make something that doesn't suck. <laughs> is that good, good way sounds so simple right i mean yeah. yeah i don't know man they're they're trying everything is like fresh lately yeah. um so and apparently it's just very very boring and uninspired like a number of houses releases at the moment and i think they're just falling into that rut like everybody else trying to glean off a little bit of that sauvage juice trying to get <laughs> a little bit of that um and it's not working yeah. i don't know there's not a lot to say at the moment honestly I think they're just going to keep cranking out lone flinkers. 
Okay. <laughs> Fair play. Maybe bring Koros Kor- back and just have it smell super strong and just super pissy. That's what I'd <laughs> like to see. <laughs> <laughs> that urinal. Give, so, yeah. give, give it to Lex to review first. Yeah. Uh, oh, he'd love it. <laughs> sell it. Yeah, it'll sell it, mate. It'll be quite the gong show, yes. Shout out to Lex Ellis. Anyway, uh, George, how do you feel about uh, your, 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 your boy, Yves Saint Laurent? It's over. Is it so? Oh, when you say over, over, like we're like O V A H, over. No, it's <laughs> over. Like, 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 it's over. It's time to get the funeral directors like, out. Like Vince Carter's I think I, over. Yeah, I think so. No, I think it's honestly over. And like, I still have got a bottle of uh, Lenoir de La Parfum. Like, I think that that's brilliant. But Eve Saint Laurent's why? I think Lenoir de La Parfum is actually the best juice that they have at the moment. Uh, I don't know what on any of you are on about with the niche line because I think it just sucks. It's just terrible. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it sucks. Oh, it sucks. Man. It sucks. It's time to. It's time that I'm we're not going to the UK no more. <laughs> it's time we should share this. Like with this. I, I thought that tuxedo was good. Yeah, tuxedo is like, like, good. is bomb. No. No, no, Cup is no. also really good. No, what about like? No, are we talking like noble leather and all that? Stuff. It just sucks. It's a, it's a, I think they have two uh, exclusive lines. Two different. Yeah, yeah that's the, the Oriental the collection. Yeah. Oh, right. I think of the Oriental collection. I've not heard of the. Um... They're the best there. The best there. Right. I, I want to try Kier Noir. I'll, oh, wow. I'll give him a chance. I'll give him a chance. But the stuff like Noble Leather and the, the, the Oriental stuff, that just sucks. But yeah. Splendid um, Wood. Yeah. Splendid Wood. <laughs> hey. Um, no, 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 no. Light. I get it, George. <laughs> Yeah, a splendid, wool, a splendid wood, no pills needed. It's all great. But, like, um, <laughs> even the ones my doctors prescribe. But um, it's honestly all fine. It's all fine, but they need to do something about it, mate. They need to do something about it. They send Laurent need to sort it out. Or the woman's not going to be satisfied. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm wow. saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, anyway. that's a great. That's a great metaphor. It's a great metaphor. I need to see a doctor. <laughs> they need some marriage therapy. That's what they need. They'll be fine. George, you've hit that like two a.m. wall, haven't you? <laughs> and speaking of that. <laughs> Okay, James, how do you feel? <laughs> you sound okay, like so yeah, why? Why is the big the big flop, right? I also think why was kind of a flop because it came out right after O Electric and they both are, kind of do a similar thing. So it was, it was like, well, what was the point of it? Will, will there be flankers of why? 100%. Because when has there been a, a YSL fragrance that didn't have flankers? Reeve Gosh had flankers. Koro <laughs> said flankers. <laughs> M7 fresh, like everything. So, yes, there's going to be flankers and we'll have to deal with them. Hopefully, they'll learn their lesson and they'll be cool. I personally like my Loam flanker collection, so I'm open to more flankers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yes, um, Bradley, I, I do totally agree that the uh, their private blend is something that's really interesting. Because yeah. last year or a couple years ago, when you think of the big, the big, Fred Comp powerhouse designer houses. It's Chanel, Dior, and then a little bit behind is YSL because you know, Lom, Lenoui, all those houses. What did YSL not have? A really cool private collection, yeah. uh, a niche type collection. So I think they um, they're doing something really cool, and I really hope it succeeds because I do think there's some excellent offerings. Tuxedo and Kaftan being my favorites personally, um, but uh, but yeah, like hopefully. By by doing, you know, by focusing on their niche line, and I say niche lightly because some people would disagree that it's niche, but yeah. um, maybe that level of creativity will feed into their designer stuff. Yeah. Um, who knows? So, yeah. All right. My faith. Okay. Hashtag faith in the 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 YSL boys. Faith boys. Faith <laughs> boys. All right. Hashtag George uh, Michael. Rest in peace. Rip. <laughs> Rip. Rip. Hashtag gonna have faith. <laughs> 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 it's all coming. 
Okay. All righty. Back on track. <laughs> Timmy, how do you feel about uh, YSL? Um, I've given up on the house, honestly. And, <laughs> like, I like I looked for, like, when Y was announced, I guess. Like, when I didn't see the note breakdown, I was like, oh, finally, a new release. Then I saw a note breakdown. I was like, okay, maybe there's still a chance. And I smelled it. I was like, there's no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> wow. Did get, get a new bottle? Though, so. <laughs> like, okay, it does not smell bad. It's just not interesting. So, you know, like, I don't know. For all I care, they can release like a Lanu with a Y, you know, or a Y Ultra and Drama, or like a Y Intense or something. Y or Electric. Just just release whatever they want. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done until they they figure this shit out. I mean, like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give I'll give I'll give them time to like you know throw a tantrum because I feel like that's what they're doing is like throwing a tantrum and releasing all these fresh fragrances. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just Why whenever they're it's a, it's <laughs> just whenever they're word. done. Yeah, just and, whenever and, they're done throwing their yeah. tantrum. Just, let me know and release something interesting. <laughs> what if it's complete swerve and next they release X? And it's X? all okay. the alpha. Uh, no, no X, and it's all the, the alphabet, alphabet backwards, <laughs> all the way to A. Uh, no, no, no. Y has to be for guys, and X has to be for girls. That just makes sense. Oh, man. Yo, oh, man. Oh, man. Yo, now they're gonna actually release it because that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but it's a women's scent, so you won't wear it. So. Oh, that's true. That's true. So I, I don't really care. You won't wear it. Hashtag yeah. misogyny. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but their their female offering is good though. The Montpellier, you know, the Montpellier is actually pretty good. Montpellier so EDP, Montpellier EDT, those are great. If they're gonna do I that, mean, one, come. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's yeah, what, over here. Whatever, to me, whenever they're done, whenever they're done, that's all I have to say. I have not. I have no advices for them because anything that I say falls on deaf ears. <laughs> anything anyone say to YSL falls on deaf ears. Open oh, so. letter to YSL. <laughs> there we go. If they're gonna do the gender thing, why don't they just do Y chromosome intense? <laughs> Get all science up in there. <laughs> Sounds like an eccentric molecule. And, and, and it'll, it'll smell like, yeah, <laughs> molecule one. Get your ticket to me. All right. Anyway, as far as East Saint Laurent, I think personally, um, and no one's brought this up, but if you guys know like Couture or anything like that, East Saint Laurent actually rebranded completely. So yeah, it's Saint Laurent now. Saint Laurent Paris. Mm -hmm. You know, Saint Laurent Paris is how they build everything that isn't part of their beauty or fragrance. <laughs> so just this is me conspiracy theory talking as far as a YouTube utopian sort of way. I'd love to see them just chuck the YSL brand. Yeah. Damn. Completely. Oh, and just from the ground up. Just let's see what we can do with Saint Laurent Paris. Have to because stop. it can't get any worse. <laughs> With what they're doing on a designer yeah. level for it's their YSL frags, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like, I'd love to see something new completely. What would they would do? Probably more of the same. But I'm just saying, I like you know, like I've had enough of the word the man or lum as they would say in French. And uh, thanks to Yves Saint Laurent, you have other uh, people calling nope. stuff lum. Like I'm just yeah. so done with it, you know. <laughs> so um, I don't care what they do at this point because, like, I'm now I'm no longer excited for any Yves Saint Laurent releases <laughs> on the uh, you know mainstream designer level. But you know, I did once love their fragrances, including favorites like La Nuit de Lomme and its flankers. Um, Lomme flankers I wasn't too keen on, but La Nuit de Lomme I think Rose and Cologne was dope, Le Parfum was dope. Um, and of course, just the standard EDT is dope too. So uh, that's the holy trinity for me as far as La Nuit de Lomme, or maybe just Yves Saint Laurent in general. So that's that. Anyway, we do have a lot of questions to get through. So uh, we're around uh, nine o'clock mark. Thank you for bearing with us. Awesome stream monsters, guys. You guys have been lovely. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, I will be happy to have the boys answer it for you. Again, my name <laughs> is Manny. I am your host today on Team Top 5, and we have a string of questions here uh, from the Stream Monsters. And uh, for you guys, I'd love to hear what you guys want to say about uh, some of these questions. So here we go. First question is, um, my man, uh, we have uh, Simpa256. Do you guys think that now that Chanel has Olivier Polge, they will release Uber new men's frag? So kind of an extension of what we were talking before. 
Um, let's kind of answer this in a yes or no question, maybe one sentence why. But um, you guys feel like they'll do that with the men's frags, a new men's fragrance under Olivier Polish through Chanel. Steven, let's start with you. Yeah, I think they will. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before they do. And I'm sure something like George said, I'm sure something is already in the works. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like is the case for Chanel, I think it's going to be with Dior as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Brad? I'm going to say yes, but the question is, how good is it going to be? That's that's the real question. Are they going to have him on creative constraint? We're, we're, we're going to find out, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Ash? Yes. I'll just copy Steven's answer and leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, we know that they are, and all of the best luck to them. Okay, James. They have to. They're one of the okay. the big giants. So. Yeah. Tim. Um, I'm gonna go against the wave. I'll say I don't think they would. No, not ever. Because <laughs> because because. Because Gabrielle wasn't all that interesting, and that was supposed to be like his debut in Chanel. His debut was boy, but yeah, as far as the, oh yeah, I forgot boy, but like it's exactly for the mainstream designer level, yeah, That's yeah, like it's, it's forgotten, like Bradley said. Yeah, it's not interesting. So here's the thing: um, just like Olivier Polge, I mean, just like Jacques Polge, his father, um, I a part of me doubts that he has much creative control. He's just the nose. He's not the creative director of. Fragrances, they literally give him a message as far as what they want created, and he's commissioned to do that stuff. It's not like, um, uh, it's not like, uh, the create being the creative director of like Lardison or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, so he's a he's just a nose. So the answer is no, I don't think he's going to release another uber awesome men's fragrance, it's not going to happen, especially us, under us, Chanel. Us Asians think, are skeptics, yeah, but like Gabrielle. It should be a very good indication of why they won't. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't do it for women, yep. people that a sex that they, you know, patronize more, why would they do it for us? Mm. As far as guys, period. So that, like, I, 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 I think it's rip for Chanel. They'll still sell a lot of bottles, but I think, I think it's over. I think it's over. Um, next question. Uh, our uh, one of our ardent fans. We love you, Joel Lima. Shout out to Portugal. Yeah. Shout out. What do you consider to be the biggest challenges facing the fragrance industry nowadays? So um, let's do one challenge, like one biggest challenge per person. Steve, how do you feel? Um, I would like to go with what George said earlier and uh, the limited use of ingredients and maybe the uh, discontinuation of a lot of ingredients. Um, but I think right now is relying too much on what they think people want. Uh, versus just taking a creative risk and taking a chance on something. And it happened with Angel Men in the mid-90s. You know, it was uh, unprecedented. And I'm hoping that something like that happens soon, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm with you. Okay. All right, uh, Brad. Uh, for me, I almost feel like it's distribution almost. Like, I don't know. Like, fragrances, they're out everywhere. I think that they need to be everywhere. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe just getting fragrances in more places, more readily available wider lines of stuff, uh, just shout get more stuff out to the people. Shout outs to my buddies in Alaska who's not getting fragrances. Exactly. Uh, See? So Alaska. That's a whole market you can tap into right there. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Alaska, lack of population, density boys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> I got to be specific there, you know, because, you know, let's be real. Sorry, your state is inhabitable. That's why Timmy came back down here. What's up? Right. I was anyway. actually never down here. I started up there. <laughs> Man, you were, you were in BC, chill, fam. Uh, yeah, I'll, see, I'll see, see, I, I know your governments. All right, Ashton. Yeah, okay, so the, the last couple of answers were both very good, and so I can't copy those, but I'm going to copy George's and say the regulations. Um, <laughs> Because if you, if you read into it a little bit, you know, that there's only so much of each ingredient that you can put in. Uh, and then some ingredients are heavily, heavily, heavily regulated. And then some over time have been basically straight up killed. So uh, that's definitely an issue as it comes to, uh, to making fragrances. Um, I know that even indie people, you know, when they're trying to come up with something, they can make something they like that smells a certain way. But if they're proportions are off they're completely screwed if they want to actually sell it so okay cool george uh death and resale 
does not help at all uh, anybody. You know, um, people have to understand that uh, retail is still a huge market, and if you buy on the internet, then the companies that are making these fragrances will not get the complete amount um, that they would with retail. It's damaging designers. Um, niche can get away with it, but designers, again, you aren't actually paying the full amount, especially if you buy off the gray market. So retail, honestly, if you care about fragrance and you love fragrance, just get out of the house, go to the store and support your local retailer. You're literally supporting the industry that you love. That's no joke. Yeah, I'm completely with you there. Totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, James. I'm more pessimistic than George. Uh, I think fragrance companies <laughs> need to adapt to the inevitable uh, abolishment of brick and mortar. Uh, Amazon is mm -hmm. by far the number one retail market. Uh, and obviously, with, with fragrances, it's, it's hard to do it exclusively online because it's smell. We don't have smell vision yet. No. So objectively, you know, as a fragrance lover, yeah, I, I, I love the retail market because I can go into a store and try it out and sample it appropriately. But unfortunately, they're going to find a way to uh, to do it properly online. Like even, you know, Scentbird, you know, Niche Essence, companies like that, they figured out a way to simulate the retail market instead of having a storefront shelf with things to sample. They send you the samples. So um, I think with the amount of creativity in the startup market, there's a lot of brains involved that are going to find a way to make it more convenient and you know so that sucks but it's the it's inevitable another thing a little more general is the same problem that a lot of artists have you know especially in music it's the challenge of keeping up with the times yet still staying true to you your brand uh, your your sound or your scent profile or whatever so your smile yeah your smell. So uh, that's always a challenge, too. And I think Chanel kind of does it really nicely, I feel. Chanel, every Chanel fragrance has that Chanel stamp for me, you know, but not a lot of companies do that. Some will just blatantly, you know, just make a Savage clone. Cough, cough, Lunarosa Carbon. <laughs> it really doesn't have as much Lunarosa DNA as I thought it would. It's mostly Savage, <laughs> in my opinion. But, um, but yeah, I guess. So retail and just artistry while, you know, being relevant. Mm -hmm. All right. It, yeah, it's funny. I just want to say on, on James's point, I, I completely agree with what you say in the respect of the thing that has adapted quite easily and quickly is niche. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because uh, obviously the prices are better, and but the prices are still high, so the companies still get a good amount out of it, and it's a win-win, but designers can't adapt to it right now. And I really think it's, it, we brought up this point earlier, it's it's because Niche, their primary focus is fragrance, and they have a, a finger on the pulse of their community a lot more than designers do. Because designers have so many, you know, things they're juggling at once, right? But with fragrance, you know, Niche are like, that's their, that's their shiz, and they're able to be more fluid, you know, from a business standpoint, especially. Mm, fair play. Yep. Timmy. Timmy. Mm, the problem, the problem right now, I guess is the. Uh, I don't know. I would have like I, I, I don't know much about the the regulation on ingredients, but I know that doesn't affect America like American perfumers as much. You know, yes. The, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Because like you know, American indie houses can still use like a lot more ingredients. Take House of Matriarch. Kasimi has a lot more rows than it, the, the EU would ever allow. <laughs> like real natural rows that EU only allows a certain amount. Oh, maybe it was, um, I, 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 the, the question is like, what's, what I think is the biggest problem? I think the biggest problem is actually what, what George said is the, the regulation in, in the EU because the EU is like the 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 creators of these fragrances right there the fragrance capital of the world is in the in, is in Europe so yeah that is the, the main problem I guess but also the creativity I mean there's really despite how low the how however amount of ingredients you have to use I, I still think you can create something creative out of it you know I don't think there's really an excuse for like 
why or <laughs> aqua lentigua literally it's a carbon uh, there's no excuses for that i think they're just following trends right now but if they really dig down to it i feel like they could make something unique so i think it's um the lack of creativity right now mm -hmm. okay fair play now mm -hmm. i kind of concur with everyone's thoughts on this matter so like i'm not really gonna expand on it myself instead then I'll just go to the next question. But thank you for your guys' takes. That's uh, lovely. I think it's an ongoing issue um, that, you know, I'm excited to see how uh, various strands of the fragrance industry uh, tackles it. I think it'll be fun. Uh, next question. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Wongaloid Wong. What is the best niche fall fragrance? He also has an awesome uh, screen name. Shout out to Wonga Lloyd. But uh, what is the best niche fall fragrance? So essentially, if you have released your niche list, great. If you haven't, um, <laughs> tell us, spoilers, what is your best for the fall this year? So uh, I will defer to my uh, friend Steven. Oh, gosh. Uh, Professor, oh. how do you feel? <laughs> I mean, there's so many great niche fragrances out there. And whenever I think of fall, I think of cinnamon, I think of spice, I think of you know, woods and resins, and it's really the first opportunity to wear something that's a little bit on the heavier side. Um, a fragrance that I've always been a fan of is by the company Baruti, and it's called Chai. And it does actually smell like chai. You have the cinnamon and the clove and the various spices, but there's a little bit of rose in there and a little bit of sweetness underneath it all, and it's just super cozy. Um, but typically, I like anything with incense, anything ambery, anything smoky, something on the resinous side. Um, but yeah, I haven't really given it too much thought, but I've been wearing a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, lovely. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to sample that now. Thank you for the... Hmm. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Too Fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No surprise. Hobdon Parfums de Marley. Uh, it was my number one last year. Number one again this year. Probably my favorite from the house, or I would say my favorite from the house. Um, you got some pretty tough competition, but I mean, for the fall... It's it's the best. Um, I'm just going to say that. So that's a big spoiler on my list. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw it coming, but it is my mm -hmm. number one. It's apples, caramel, myrrh, woods, and spices. Yeah. It's smoky, dark, great performance. It's got me a compliment, or at least noticed almost every time that I've worn it. And can't I thought it was Bergamot yeah. Soleil. I, that was my number two, dude. That Damn. was my number two. <laughs> Fall fragrance. Yeah. yeah, it's so good, though. If you guys haven't checked out Habdon, it's, a, I think, a hidden gem from the house. Not, a lot of talk about it in comparison to the others. I think you are the proponent of Hobdon online out of any, yeah. which <laughs> is love. I love it so much. You know what? Yeah. And I respect that because Hobdon's not a clone. Hey. Yeah. Hey. It's an hey. 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 All righty. Um, uh, Ash, how do you feel uh, for fall? Yeah. 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 So I did my uh, top 10 niche list. Yep. Um, it was uh, Mimo. African yes. leather. You know, uh, I've said it for yeah. a while. You know, I've got, I've got oh. that, that oh. love. Oh. Oh. Mother, bro. Oh, oh, oh. oh, no, some people like to play or hate on, on Memo, but that one's really what? nice. Leather is clean, refined. Honestly, it's not even really a leather centric scent, more so it is saffron and spice. But yeah, it's that one is, is great. Fantastic <laughs> fragrance. Memo Pari. Nice, lovely. All right. Uh, George. You know, the effort that we put into this year's uh, full list production wise i'm not going to be just spoiling the number one for all of you um but uh one of the best objective objectively one of the best full fragrances i've ever smelled is keist by slumber house it's not number one this year for me but it is absolutely brilliant and if i can just tell you a really sad story some of you know it my actual number one that i um had for my full list we went out to yorkshire we shot the video and then on the way back, I got this smell from my bag. Boom. My number one fragrance busted open. Mm. Right? Started really leaking. Very depressing. Started leaking. Mm. By two hours later, I thought I'd sorted everything out. The whole bottle had gone. So I shot my uh, whole list. Yeah. I did my number one, and two hours later, the bottle was empty. That's a bit, almost poetic. Yeah. <laughs> That story. So badly poetic. <laughs> Yo, real yeah. talk. I, I made a fragrance travel guide video not too long ago, and like this is how I travel with fragrances. With if I'm like, uh, you know, uh, on business somewhere, or if I'm going on um, uh, a flight somewhere and something like that. Like these small electronics cases that you can buy in Amazon and stuff. Yeah. I always like throw a bottle in here, and like. Hey. All I'm gonna like, say. 
the best is, thing ever. Is that my number one? The shape of the bottle sucks, which is probably giving it other way to some Ooh. of you. But but the the bottle shape is ridiculous. I didn't actually want to take it out on location because I thought this could get some. damaged. Um, but yeah, that is that that sucks. That sucks. Hmm. Yo, uh, bad bottle designs for the lose. Yeah. Way <laughs> <laughs> uh, to yeah. sum it up. <laughs> Shout out to those bad bottle designs. Like, I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's just if it's an ass design, it's an ass design. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are a number of those. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, J Royal, is it Naxos or Naxos? Uh, it's Naxos. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Zephyro, actually. No. Um, oh, wow. Well, Zephyro's good. No. Um, so, as you know, Manny, I haven't really had a chance to wear proper fall fragrances yet. Because even mm. today, I was out in my shorts. It's yeah. not fall yet for us. So, I released my early fall fragrance list. My summer to fall transition fragrances. And those are the ones that I've been wearing mostly. And my... I guess the highest ranked niche fragrance was uh, Aqua de Parma Colonia Intensa Oud. Mm. I think it's a fantastic fragrance. I think it's amazing. It uh, has very good performance, and it still has those fresh citrus elements that make it wearable in the warmer weather, but it's definitely fall. Um, I will say the fragrance that I've only worn once, and I'm dying to wear it way more, is Memoir Man Amouage for the fall. I'm more man. I love the more man in the fall. Yes, so. and uh, I was able to revisit with it with you two days ago. Just lovely. Yeah. Yep. No, love, yeah. lovely stuff. Lovely. Stuff. The bomb dot com, dude. It's the bomb dot com, as the Kardashians would say. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. Armenian pride. So is it like yeah. favorite favorite fall fragrance right right now? Yeah. Uh, or he specified niche, and I know you're gonna say okay. niche anyway. So look what it is. <laughs> what is well, my favorite fall fragrance right now is actually Crete's Viking. Yeah. Yeah, I wear it a lot. As you can see, like it was released like last month and I already made like a ten percent dent in the bottle. Like I wear it I wear it a lot. It's like my signature fall scent now. And I love it. I don't know. Like it's as if, if the price was cheaper, which is it is getting cheap by the way, if you look on eBay right now, like the price like you know, there you start to see them at like two fifty, three fifty. So that's they're in the right there right now a really good deal. I feel like it's a phenomenal like release by Creed, very unique to their house. And to me, it's just a very versatile scent. I bought it because one, like it, the smell really speaks to me, and two, I can l use it literally any time at all during fall or winter. <laughs> like it's my go-to like dumb reach scent for this yeah. year. Lovely Cold season. Cold season. All right, nice. Uh, niche fall fragrance for me. Um, yeah. Gypsy water. <laughs> I'm bright and uh, I'll go with my number one, um, which you know, I mean, is debatable if you want to call it niche as far as like a definition is concerned. But oh La d'Argent by Christian Dior, number one. That was not um, one mine yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so I have to say Bay d'Argent because uh, they, they it's are niche. Good. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it is. Bay d'Argent. Yeah, there's, there's, there. yeah. Yeah. there's, there's going to be that guy who's like hashtag triggered about it. So that's why. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm, you know. Um, you know, walking around that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not. Yeah. I think it's designer and niche. I think hey, it's possible. both, fam. That's what's it's up. Totally. It's 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 a Venn diagram. It fits. It's both. a Venn diagram. <laughs> so we have to have. Uh, we have to coin that. Like it's. Is what it about Vincent? No, it's designer. Oh wow. It's dish. All my dish bags. All my dish bags. What's up? Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, that's Hashtag dish bags. Okay. <laughs> no um, trend. And, anyway, uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, this one's cool. Uh, so this is by um, the Broadwalk, um, who uh, also has a channel herself. Uh, so go follow her if you aren't already. Um, you'll see her as one of the stream monsters in the chat. Uh, shout out to the Broadwalk. A non-fragrance question, but I would love to know how you guys put out content so regularly while juggling a full-time job and social life. So I'll excuse that my myself from that question because, like, obviously I don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, to people who, do, so we're, I'm gonna excuse uh, George from this question. I'm gonna excuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shout out to uh, Brad, <laughs> Ashton, James, and Tim, and Steve. <laughs> Yo, you, come on. We, we suck. 
I don't you even know. Get, suck. <laughs> I don't even get what what I do. What, I don't have a job. I don't have a social life. Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> how do you put out content so regularly george or in your case not so regularly but anyway steven <laughs> uh, i'd love to hear you answer this question because i know you're one of the purveyors of uh regular uh, so content. triggered yeah, yeah. <laughs> steven how do you feel about this <laughs> well oh gosh i think i must have put out like 800 videos now and uh it's in it's hard to really think about that yeah, yeah. um i think you know, we all know how time consuming it is. And uh, realistically, I put in like 20 to 30 hours a week into the whole YouTube thing. But um, what I do is I just pick one day out of the week and I record a ton of videos on that day. And uh, I just release them slowly. So I could potentially release a video tomorrow that I recorded back in like June or July. Mm. So um, yeah, I mean, that's the way to do it. I know there are some people out there who release a, a, a video the very same day that they recorded it. And that's awesome. And uh, I wish I could do that, but I, I really can. So um, yeah, that's how I do it. Cool. So uh, I love this question because you get to hear everyone's perspective on it. Uh, Brad. Man, no sleep. No sleep. We are vampires. Like, Team we no edit this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like for me, um, I just try and do videos whenever I can, to be honest. Whenever I have free time, I have usually two days of the week. Um, you guys know I like to film outside and like on location um, shots, which are a little bit harder to do like in consecutive order. I really like the idea of doing a bunch of videos at once and then slowly re releasing them. But for like, I think my, my kind of style of videos, it's not really doable. So um, yeah, I, I just try and film once or twice a week and then uh, just edit as best I can for a while. So, you know, it's those, those late nights have been up to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. sometimes editing and try and get them out. But um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 tough, and sometimes it kind of takes over, and I gotta get my priorities straight. And you know, still in school, still got several part-time jobs, and trying to have a social life at the same time. It's it's hard, but I do enjoy it. You know, I really love this hobby. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, ad culture is a thing for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ashton. Yeah. So I've done the same thing that Stephen does. Um, I've done that in the past. Like when I have free time. <laughs> to film a bunch of videos and kind of yeah. put them back. Um, more recently, if it's a day, um, because I work from home, then I can film something when I would normally take lunch. So I'll do that a lot of times and then edit it after the fact. Um, that's probably what I've been doing most recently. Uh, so instead of lunch, I'll do that. <laughs> and I'll just eat while I work. Uh, you have to make some sacrifices. Sometimes you have to stay up late. You have to do it when you don't really want to do it. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that you have stuff ready to go. So mm -hmm. it's unfortunate sometimes because you're like, I've, I have a like a responsibility to put things out on my channel, um, and that takes precedence sometimes over other things like sleep. And then uh, when I moved and had to renovate everything, I just had to basically put it completely on the back burner because it yeah. wasn't happening. There's just too much going on. So it's very time consuming, a lot more so than a lot of people would think. Oh, yeah. Because uh, a lot of times you see in the Facebook groups, people will be like, oh, it's not that hard. You just put a camera on, record for 10 minutes, and upload it. And it's like, oh, that'd be effing great if that's how it worked. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the lack of empathy that um, a lot of creators here on YouTube get, especially in regards to um, other things in our climate currently, too. Um, which I won't really get into, but yep. that's definitely yep. true. I made a 35 minute video on it. Go watch it. Uh, yo, 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 you lost. You can't plug. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, to be fair, well, that uh, video looks out for you too, Tim. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, plug away. Plug away. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> no friendly fire. Yeah. Um, but uh, cool. Uh, Ashton, anything else on that or? Uh, I mean, that, that's basically it, you know, it's, it's very time consuming and you have to make it work. And um, for me right now, basically I'm filming, editing, and then uploading a day or two later. I, I don't have a, so what, whatever free time I get, whenever that is, I, I try to make it happen. And sometimes I have more free time and that's the videos that are more heavily edited or ones where I can actually do something. And if the time doesn't work out like that, then um, I'll film it right here and edit what I can and, and put it up. So yeah, you just have to the show must go on, right? Yep. Okay, cool. All right, uh, James. So uh, my regiment has been uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 
uh, that's that's my my shtick. I, I try to treat it like a uh, a TV show, a traditional cable television show, where it's everyone knows what to expect on those days, which means it's it is very demanding. Uh, it, it is very time consuming, as as every every one of you guys on the stream can empathize with. Um, which means, uh, and actually, I saw M. Schlock. He did mention it in the chat. He's right. I actually don't have a social life yeah. because of this. Uh, I don't, <laughs> and uh, and I'm okay with that just because I'm yeah. passionate about this hobby. I'm, I love it. I have a lot of fun in all facets of it. So the discovery of fragrances, uh, the blind buying, yeah, even coming up with ideas. Life. Yeah. And and editing, I love it all. Yeah. So I'm okay with that sacrifice. I'm also at a point in my life where my priorities have vastly changed. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm nearly 30. I'm not saying whether that's old or young. Um, I run a business, so I don't need to go clubbing anymore. I don't need to go to the bar, and uh, spend tons of money on alcohol. Unless if it's scented alcohol, then I'll spend all kinds of money. Hey. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a sacrifice that I've made, which I don't really see as a sacrifice. So basically, when I come home after work, um, you know, I'll I'll come up with ideas, and then on the weekends, Saturday will probably be the day where I'll film a few videos. Uh, I usually won't film too far in advance. I think the furthest far in advance I filmed was maybe two two weeks, um, but I try to kind of keep up with my community and say, hey, what do you want to see? And then that's kind of the videos that I'll I'll try and put out. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, social life. Rest in peace. So. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, at least you have us. So. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There so, you go. That's what's up. Uh, Timmy. Timmy. I was just gonna say, like, um, with the social life thing, like, you guys literally have become my social life. Like, sometimes, like, I would call Manny, or I would talk to Bradley, and, like, you know, Ashton like was starting to talk 2 to him. At, like, 2 a.m. At, like, 2 a.m. while we're editing yeah. a video, yeah. you know, like, because yeah. we know we're both editing together, and <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. You guys have become, like, my social life. In terms of, like, how I do it, how I was able to release videos while still work and everything like that is because... I think it's very important to know what you can do, like your skill set, what you can do and in what time frame. So you can easily, like, you can better, not easily, it's never easy. Like, so you can better plan your time to do it. Like, Maddie knows, despite how many hours of sleep I get, I, I, will, I will still put out a video if, I'm, if I really want to put out that video. Um, like, I, for me, I have an alarm set every morning that I wake up, like, early in the morning, and I'll try to get a recording done. Because I know myself, I know that it takes me about 30 minutes, like, roughly, on average, to film one video. And I'll get that time in before, like, I go to work sometime. If I'm able to get up, if I'm not too tired, I'll get up and film that video so that after work, I come back. I don't have to worry about getting dressed up nice for the video. I'll just sit down and edit. And sometime at work, I'll take my laptop with me on lunch. I'll just edit along the way. Like just do what I can, like try to use my time wisely. And every time, like me and Bradley, we do a lot of location shoots as well. I used to do that a lot when I was back in Alaska. Is that you spend, like when you go out on, like, like when, when I go out on one location shoot, I try to get more than one video film. Like just to you yeah, maximize yeah. my time. Like if I'm in that scenery now, I'm going to film two or three videos if I can. Just try to push it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's just big time management. And it takes a lot of love. That's one thing that a lot of people don't understand, like when you see comments on Facebook saying that, like, these guys, you know, they're getting sponsored by these brands, they're sending these bottles, they're doing it for the bottles, this and that. Guys, seriously, if, if there's no love, if we don't love this, none of us would do this. Because, come on, if we want to make money on YouTube, there's other channels. I can, like, we can this all start a gaming channel. All right. this, yeah, but this is the worst channel if this you want to make money. This is the worst community to be in, be in if you want to make money on <laughs> we, YouTube. We could all make, like, Period. gaming channels, FIFA channels, and we'll all be exactly. bigger right now. So, and I'm going to be doing that, too. So, like, if I want to make money, <laughs> I'm in it for Game the money. Plug. I, I, am, I am doing it. Like, I will but by the end of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna be doing this, but it's because we love it, like Tim exactly. said. Yeah. Yep. Like it, it takes a lot of love and passion to do this, and that's one thing that you guys, everyone, have to understand. It's just not an easy job, but we do it because we love it, you know. And um, and we're addicted. I know. Throughout, <laughs> and we're addicted. But throughout time, it throughout time, I think the more you focus on honing your skills, and whether that's in editing and um, you know, or in filming, it makes it easier. Work yeah, smart, not hard. Yeah. Work work smart, yeah. not harder. Yeah. Like, like, like what Steven is doing and Ashton is doing when they film multiple videos in one day when they're free just to like, release them later. 
you know, that's really really smart Whether that's their they strategy have to do it or not um yeah it, it, like it's working out you know mm -hmm. um so like that that's what's up like it, and what you guys do for yourselves works too like brad and and uh tim and um mm -hmm. And James, of course. Uh, yeah, we all just have to find our own strategies. So George work. and just myself own in so on that strategy. Yeah. yeah, no, fair play. Um, mm -hmm. No, no, but um, I, I, we should answer this question anyway, George. I was just, uh, you know, trying to pull your leg there. But uh, uh, how how do you feel about um, this per se? Juggling this with uh, everything else you have going on with uh, work and um, when you were in school and whatnot. I mean, this is all I've known for a very long time. Uh, making videos um, and I don't know like I sort of have to kind of think about that sometimes um, you know when I was when I was uh, 14 15 probably should have been going out socializing and I don't know going after women or something like that I was stuck inside trying to figure out how Adobe After Effects worked you know no, man, somebody... let's be real what's what, what's doper well, I don't know. <laughs> After Effects will always be there for you, fam. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> it's true. It's true. At least Adobe After Effects has given me something back in my time. Oh, um, but uh, no, for real, it's all been it's all been fun. It's all been fun. But I don't know. Like recently, everybody knows I'm doing the storyline and everything like that. That has been my life, and you know, I like pushing things and 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 taking things to new limits. But I don't know. Um, I said to Bradley, I said it feels as though the storylines kind of push back. Mm -hmm. But this has been my life, and even though I'm not not releasing videos as much, I am working oh, to yeah. make these six episodes. The be I, I want these six episodes to basically be my legacy that people remember the Fragrance Apprentice by when I've gone. Hashtag right? legacy. Yeah, Hashtag like for, legacy. Yeah, for real. I want people. Ooh. When I'm I'm gone, I'm finished. People to be like, "Wow, George really said something and made me think about fragrance in a new way by that storyline." And I got to make it That's perfect. A great mission. Yeah. yeah, for real, oh, fair play. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, how I balance it, I mean, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't. You don't. No, no. I mean, like, yeah, like, which is indicated in my upload count for sure. I mean, like, like, yeah. it's 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 super tough for me lately, mainly because, like, I, I travel for work, you know, so I'm seldom home here. Like, being able to crack down on videos and stuff, and of course, when you're editing and stuff, you want to get on a roll per se, and be able to, you know, kind of do things in an uninterrupted fashion. Um, and like, I kind of, I, I I do that when I'm here. I make most of my all my time when I am off, but when I'm on the road or on a plane for like two other like for two thirds of the year it i feel like sometimes it requires a herculean effort to do it and there's times there's been weeks where i talk to you guys on the stream more often than i do uploads myself and uh that i feel gutted about as well um and it's something that i'm still looking to work on but uh it's time management especially for something you love um you're going to be able to do it if you love it that much um it depends how, how much you want it I feel like uh, the yeah. seven people in this chat want it a lot, and that's why we're here. So I hope you guys uh, are enjoying the content from each of us, and uh, I look forward to doing uh, more for myself and with you guys. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, but uh, the way I want to do this Q&A, guys, is I want to make sure that um, I at least one question from each asker, per se. So uh, this will be the final question tonight. Um, I have it from Markafa Creative Solutions. Shout out to Markafa, who's a big fan of the show. Um, what are the notes you think underexplored you'd like to see more in perfumery and why? Asked by several people last week, apparently, which we totally screwed up and missed on. Uh, this will be the last question. We will say our goodbyes. Uh, so the way I want this done uh, from each of y'all, name one fragrance note and why. So we'll start off with uh, Steven. What, which note would you like? Oh gosh, a fragrance note that's underexplored. Underexplored, yes, sir. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Doctors. Um, that's difficult. Yeah, it is difficult. Um, oh, I think so no matter what note you think of, whether it be like a Broxen or 
a Lang Lang or a Tuberose. I think we can all think of one fragrance that really takes that note and highlights it. But I think it's it's probably a lot of the lesser known synthetics and they are used in such abundance, but a lot of them have not really been made the focal point of a lot of fragrances. Uh, just to give you a very quick frame of reference, um, recently I, I was working on a project where somebody reverse engineered a very popular coconut based fragrance. And one of the ingredients is uh, octalactone gamma. And I remember smelling that raw material and thinking to myself, this stuff smells amazing. Like why wouldn't more people use this ingredient? So I think there are a lot of synthetics out there, maybe because of what Ashton said, that they can only be used in such a high concentration before, you know, Ifra says, don't do this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, a lot of synthetics are actually really awesome. Yeah, synthetics exist not only for, you know, like endangered control of certain species per se, but um, some of sometimes they are better, you know, and last longer. So like, let's <laughs> let's not count out our boys synthetics hashtag synthetic boys <laughs> all right um too uh, fresh speaking of uh too fresh how do you feel about this uh pick one note yeah you know, it's gonna be fresh yeah. i have <laughs> two actually or okay let me just get it one of them is gunpowder actually okay 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 gunpowder uh, yeah it's used in um la fin du monde which i have up here and also another one of my favorites a, a more nocturne and it just adds like this sizzly i mean it's not really like a note per se you know but um i don't know what it is about it but i think that they add something very special to both of these it gives it this metallic like explosive kind of a edge to it sounds really weird but um i really like to see gunpowder used a little more mainstream and see what it, it can be done because i think it's really really cool yeah that's my note gunpowder so metal dude yeah it's literally <laughs> <laughs> intense <laughs> <laughs> All righty, okay, uh, Ashton. Yeah, so piggybacking off what Steven said, there really are uh, just so many aroma chemicals out there at this point that it's almost overwhelming. Like if you go to um, uh, Perfumer Supply House, Perfumer's Apprentice, uh, any of these sites that provide uh, raw ingredients, there are mind-blowing amounts of them out there, just covering like almost every single note. Um, something that gets talked about a lot that has been like almost captured but not really hit on the head is the scent of petrichor so mm -hmm. like the smell after it rains um yeah. people will say like mosaic or even narciso rodriguez has kind of a Definitely. kind of a scent like Captain that essence. Mm. right and there's there's a note um uh, an aroma chemical that you can buy off a of perfumer supply house and i'm assuming that there are multiple like this out there it's called geospin assuming i'm pronouncing that correctly um, but it's supposed to give off that kind of scent but it is hella expensive um it's so it's like over 200 dollars for uh, a 10 gram uh a vial so it's it's wow. stupid expensive but something that could make a petrichor type scent i think it wouldn't be like a hit in terms of you know, the mass amounts of people, but in terms of people that are into fragrances, that's something that's seems to be asked about fairly regularly. Okay. Fair play. No, I can get that. Uh, George. Uh -huh. Um, a note that I've always wanted, and I've always thought, you know what, you could do a lot with this, but I don't. Uh, well, I, I guess I understand why it isn't used. But basil. Hmm. I think oh. that basil is a really, really lovely smell, and I love the smell of basil. And sure, it's a bit foody, but I don't know. Tomato leaf is foody in Italian leather, but it works. Mm -hmm. I think that there's just could, there could be a lot of creativity with basil, and I don't think that you could ban it. Yeah. Also, no, I don't um, think you could ban it as an ingredient. If, if you guys are in the chat, press one for basil and two for basil. <laughs> Obviously, Basil boys. I'm gonna say that Basil sounds cooler. <laughs> ba Basil boys. Me and Tim Basil, boys. Uh, we Basil had sounds like a British dog. We had this conversation yeah. before, Tim. Uh, mine's yeah. Basil. 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 Oh God. Basil. There we go. How about one for Nike? Uh, Basil on my Basil. Nike. <laughs> or uh, Mate, one one for Mate, one. It, is, it is Basil. It is right. Basil. Gordon Ramsay says Basil, so it's Basil. Thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> no, hey, look at the chat. All twos, no ones. Yo, one, one for ask and two for ax. <laughs> no. <laughs> you say change your band. I ask you a question. I ask you a question. All right, so I'm asking you now, James. Uh, which note? <laughs> oh, I hate you. <laughs> um, I would love to see Shane Blue explore a garlic butter accord. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm serious. That's the best. That's the best. There's going to be like a new genre of fragrances called culinary genre. You know, I feel like I feel like Demeter is going to get to that before Shane Blue. Yeah. 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 Culinary boys with his head. Sea boys. <laughs> That's legit my answer. <laughs> okay, is oh, it oh, a spatula? So, guys, one for Z or two for Z? Oh, oh come on. God, what? Come on. Okay, now, I am now. Yeah. Like zombies is dead, right? The zombies are always dead. Hey, Zed's dead. All right, uh, Tim. Um, I would like to see a note of um, dried dates be used more. Dates. Okay. Dried dates, dates so gives like a really like like undertone of fruity sweetness. That's very. I don't know. I think it has a really like interesting component to a fragrance. I do have a fragrance that had a note of dried dates in there, and like the sweetness in there is nothing like I've ever smelled in any any other fragrance. So I think that's a really interesting fruity note. Maybe an alternative to plum, maybe. Yeah. I'm with you first. Yeah, no, let's give it a shot because uh, it's not like it's a polarizing scent uh, or that polarizing in my personal opinion. I feel like it could do I think, be done. Um, one tip, like if you guys want to explore like um, uh, notes, different notes that are not used to often explore some uh, Asian houses because Asian fragrance houses are not represented well at all throughout the, in, in the fragrance world in general. Not a lot of people know about them. If you explore them, um, there's a lot of things to be seen there, like basil, you know, <laughs> and the note of mango. You like mean, you mean South Asia, things. right, Timmy? South Asia, Southeast Asia, yeah. No, Southeast Asia for sure. Where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, like, she said, gunmetal, too. When, um, yeah. when Bradley mentioned gunmetal, there's a, a, a print parfum actually has a gunmetal fragrance. Yeah, based on the gunmetals. It's actually like an instance accord that it has that makes the smell of gunmetal. It's not actually uh, gunmetal. So. Fair play. And I'm going to keep my answer short. It's uh, because it's used in uh, like Northeast Asian perfumery um, a lot, but elsewhere, not so much. I'm talking about yuzu. Yeah, so uh, nice fizzy citrus that I feel like is a hit in any fragrance it's in. It's just, it's not in enough fragrances. Like, it's I'm yellow. surprised yellow. that there's no yuzu from Atelier Cologne. Yeah, that's to say. You that know, like, like, that. that is the next one. And y'all heard oh, it yeah. here first. In collaboration you know, with so. Triple Ink. I, I would do that totally. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, Triple Ink, I hope you make this. We have Timmy out here with House of Matriarch, Triple yeah. Ink, and Atelier Cologne. The fact that that hasn't happened yet breaks my heart. So, <laughs> see that shit? Yeah, that's what's up. Anyway, guys, you have been a lovely audience, Stream Monsters. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys have any more um, questions or anything like that, uh, put them in here now. We won't get to them now, but I will save them for next week, and uh, we will uh, keep you in touch on our social media about who is hosting and who to expect as far as guests potentially next week. At this point, though, I'd love to thank our guest of honor, uh, Stephen from Red Lessons. Thank you for so much for uh, being on here. It's an honor. Yeah. I can only hope that you ask me again in the future, man. It's been nothing short of an honor. I mean, it's completely my pleasure. So thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. yeah awesome. Awesome. And uh, I'll, we will be listing his links in the description below, which I've already have with everyone else's here at Team Top 5. So uh, at this point, uh, he being awesome. Just, Sorry? It's, at this point, it's going to be Team Top 100. And I'm going <laughs> to have members. And, yeah, and, and because, you know, we, we, we're hard like that, H-U-N-N-I-D, hunted. <laughs> so, there you go. And it'll be hunted, yeah, but in, like, the red 100 font. Yeah. Hashtag, yeah, like, hashtag yeah, so emoji. Yeah, let's, let's not do that. Yeah, except we will. Hey, I'm joking. But um, any last words from everyone here? Not really. Check us out. Hit 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 the, yeah. the red button if you guys haven't yet. Turn on some uh, notifications. Hit, hit the bell. Hit the bell. <laughs> hit the bell. That's what's up. But yeah. um, that's pretty much it. Um, guys, stay on for a sec afterwards for a quick word. But otherwise, keep on being awesome, guys. Peace. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Bye. Yeah.